everybody. So the wizard uh, and cleric cast Resilient Sphere and Levitate on the BBEG, and then because the, the sphere is weightless, they just ra raised him thousands of feet up into the air and then dropped his ass, so he plummeted to orbit and died on impact. And well, uh, you know, nobody was expecting that, so I guess session's canceled. Uh, welcome back. It is us again. It, me at the hosting chair, because we got to finish this bitch up uh, correct this time, which is to say, actually finish it. Uh, <laughs> I'm here with uh, Josh. Hello, that was an incredibly random out-of-pocket intro bit. It was a clip I saw on YouTube. <laughs> ah. It's one of those things that made me really annoyed because it's like, you know, you as the dungeon master can just say no, right? <laughs> you can just be like, no, this is stupid. Like, what the fuck? I always hate those videos. But yeah, uh, I'm also here with Matt. <laughs> I too am here and I love those videos. What are you talking about? <laughs> They're just so dumb. Like, it's like, hey, GM, do you know I can do this thing that completely overrides? It's like, you know, me as uh, the arbitrator of the game can just tell you to fuck off. <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> I love this. That's why I can so and funny. I will. It's just like, what if I just said no? That's why I, my, one of my players, because uh, I, I think I've told you guys this, like, like my, all my players are decked out in gear and stuff because I did the math thing. I shouldn't have. And I gave them too many magic items again. Yeah. Okay. So I so I keep looming the threat of them. I'm like, I'm gonna throw a rust dragon at you guys one day. It's gonna happen, and you're gonna hate it. And all my players are like, Matt, you do, do not throw a fucking rust dragon at me. I swear to God. And one of my players, because we've you know we've sent gifts to each other and stuff. We're we're a tight friend group. One of my players is like, Matt, I have your address. I swear to God, if you throw a rust dragon at me, my I destroy my adamantine plate armor and my magic dragon sword and my plus two ring of armor i will drive to your fucking state and i will kick down your door and i will beat the shit out of you as, we're, as this session is going wow <laughs> he's like he's like you guys are gonna be playing dd all of a sudden you just hear a loud door kick in and just fucking pounding <laughs> <laughs> matt screaming in pain yeah sounds like a party good times good times good it. friends <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. It, it, they won't see it coming. You're going to throw You'll the rust dragon see at them. It right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I already okay. have the stat block done. Got it. I'm just, so I'm, wait, just your... I'm picking the choose when I throw it. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I see. I see. So, so here's my question. A rust monster <laughs> technically only destroys non-magical metal. So are you just throwing caution to the wind saying, fuck it, we ball and destroying all metal? Yeah, rust breath. No, it's, it's a magic rust dragon. It destroys magical items. Yeah, rust breath. They just oh, so it, of rust breath. <laughs> so only, it just oh, leaves yeah. all mundane metal alone. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're just mundane. Yeah, what do? We... That's even worse. We, you've just given yeah. them the secret to beating it. They're just gonna fucking put all their items in like a safe underground mm, and be, fight this thing with sticks. <laughs> it'd be a shame if the dragon was immune to damage that wasn't magical in nature. <laughs> that would be the <laughs> biggest douche move. But I'm kind of there for it. I'm not even gonna lie. It's a where it's a rust dragon terras vampire. <laughs> I kind of fucked with this. I'm not even gonna lie. Interesting. <laughs> At first, I was like, "Damn, man, that's fucked up." But now I'm like, "Hold on, that idea kind of fucks." Hold on. <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, see, it's cook. CR sixty five. You're like, nice. Uh, oh, <laughs> nice. wait a minute. <laughs> I see. How much health does it have? One hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred million dollars. <laughs> One hundred uh, million. Sir, could you lead in a million? Don't, don't sir, do that, audience. <laughs> it's 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 the nineties. It, it that, that's not really a lot of money anymore. Uh, <laughs> One hundred billion <laughs> gajillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my favorite ones is when he he's, he does like the one million kajillion f f f f f f yen no. and then it hangs up and it's like wait yeah. that's, like, <laughs> that's still a lot of money friend. but that's like what? nothing it's like what hand what are you it's talking about a hundred times less if you say yen you fucking boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep I love the Austin awesome Powers oh. movies so good what gems yep and now you know Josh mm. are you glad I mean, I kind of knew about them. Although the funny thing is, that's one of those movie series where I was definitely making references to it that I didn't know were references to Austin Powers. It was just baked into the culture. Yeah, yeah. There it were several. Is. If you if you do the like, I love gold. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the I love gold. Uh, I, I, everything Sharks fat bastard says. Laser <laughs> Sharks with laser beams, like yeah. I'm dead sexy. Yeah, the like, dead sexy God. thing I've heard many people say and did not realize that's what that was from. Mm. Yeah. 
I think uh, the, the one that I unironically use a lot is Fasha. Like, that's how I refer to my dad pretty Fasha. much almost. Yeah. Not exclusively, but it's like, I'm like, my Fasha. And he's like, what, what's what's up, man? What do you need? Like, <laughs> Fasha, Fasha, dad, just, dad, Fasha, yeah. dad, dad, oh, father. Oh, father. 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 <laughs> just, oh, that's, father. Really, that's one of the best low key jokes is him just repeating father to himself <laughs> quietly. <laughs> Also, uh, moly, moly, mole, mole, oh, like some moly, mole, moly, moly, moly. Yeah, uh, that that's another one I didn't know was an Austin Powers bit. Yeah, I think now I think about it, like, uh, because I know we were talking. I thought the second movie was my favorite, but I think there's there's more meme potential from three. Third I think one, I just yeah. like the story better in two, but like three is just so it's. I think it is. Yeah, I, I kind of agree now. It's the best one. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, I I think most people would agree that Gold Member is the best one. I actually have a newfound respect for two that I had not had until we rewatched it. Mm. Anyways, we're on an Austin Powers podcast. Cigar and a waffle. Pipe of the crib. <laughs> or smoking a pancake. Bong. I think bong and a blitz is probably my favorite. Yeah, bong and a blitz. <laughs> Don't you shat on that turd? Oh yeah, that was another one. <laughs> that was another one I didn't know was a reference but had heard before. <laughs> well, I, I think that the bit's like we have to speak English. 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 It's yeah. like, Oh no! I go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Where are we? What are we doing? <laughs> What's happening? Uh, you know, we're we're reading off some more uh, spicy takes from our our, our lovely uh, uh, viewers and listeners. Nice. Last oh, time sorry, we uh, we didn't get anything like too too spicy, so I'm no. hoping today is a little hotter. I want the uh, I want that you know uh, hot ones sauce, the last dab bomb experience right now. I want I want that Idris Elba just absolutely losing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, oh, fuck, oh my god, I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> I, want, I want the Shaq meme right now. You're like, Ooh, like <laughs> when Shaq I, becomes the sun out guy. <laughs> I think my favorite part of the Idris Elba one is that he's like, oh god, oh, this is really hot. What the fuck? And then he licks his fingers. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. He, he just double takes it. You're like, well, why did you fucking do that? Uh, I think my favorite were the ones when I don't know who it was, but there was an actor on and he was, he poked, he was like rubbing his eyes and literally the hot one guy's like, no, no don't touch your face <laughs> like, oh yeah no. and he was like did you just and the guy's like oh, oh, oh. no and you're like oh no oh he's so fucked yep massive L's <laughs> all right gentlemen uh, -uh. uh so so those of you who did not watch the previous episode I will quickly recite the rules and, and reacquaint you if you don't remember them but shame also go watch the not. previous episode yeah, yes exactly. but also you should watch the previous episode and shame on you if you didn't um <laughs> Yeah, so I will be pulling uh, uh, the spicy takes out of uh, a randomly generated hat. We will read them off. We will discuss them and see if they are a W take, a mid take, or an L take. And at the end, we will tally up the grand total and see uh, if our viewers and listeners are, you know, majority L, mid, or W in that respective manner. Yes, base. <laughs> we have spoken. This is the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And without further ado, I think we should right get get right into it. Yeah, I can say that. Mm -hmm. And if rolling it, I'm trying to remember and... from last week, what was our hottest take? Was it like? I think it was, uh, oh, it did, was uh, did... it was Brett's uh, the mar like big time Marshall player. Marshalls need to learn. Uh, no, 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 I no, thought no, we no. all that was we Brett. all liked that one. I thought no, we, we like, did. Yeah, we that's... did. No, it was no. no like, Brett's was there's too many casters. No, yeah, you're talking about yeah. the one where Marshalls don't have it that bad. Stop being a baby about it. Yes, maybe. Yeah. I was that the one we got like the most heated on. I don't know. I think you're no, the one I got the most heated on was guns. The guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think you're both forgetting the most important one of them all. Dungeons are cooler than dragons. Which uh, was yes, just yes. factually incorrect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't the, Dungeons uh... are way cooler. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, that's the that was the hottest one of them all by far. Yeah, I think for me yeah. it was divine smite is balanced, and it's like no, no, actually incorrect. <laughs> I, that was yeah, that was pretty funny too. Take your take your L. Okay, looks like we rolled number or I, not number. What's mm -hmm. wrong with me? Minus 22. Damn it. Now I'm <laughs> <laughs> You know what's funnier than 24? 25. I was, you know, th that was the <laughs> one time. The one time I was going to accept you making your mom joke. It's the <laughs> only time. Damn You're it. learning. Fuck. Gotcha. Oh, oh my God. Oh, what is this essay? 
Yeah, yeah, you ready for Brigitte? Okay, so. Okay, oh let's go. Fucking God, bro. Okay. Wizards as a class have become boring. Okay. They got all the best toys with effectively no downsides. Compared to every other spellcaster in the game, there are very few, if any, reasons to pick the other casters other than preference. Wizards were cool when they were the glass cannon who had to carefully plan out their spell lists. Real mega mind energy. 5e has turned them into the look at me, I am the captain now. Downsides? Weak early. JK, no one plays below level 3 for more than a couple of sessions. Most parties skip to level 5. Low HP? There's not enough room here to explain the insane number of ways to mitigate that for a minimal character cost. Long rest caster? As opposed to what? A short rest caster? I think I've heard stories of those existing, but it's hard to remember over the sound of all the long rests most parties end up taking anyway. I'd bring up components such as drawbacks, but I'm worried one one of you might asphyxiate from laughter so we can skip that. <laughs> like most components. Fair. That's crazy. Like yeah, most components. I, I, I mean, that was, wow. That was a, a, <laughs> that's a banger. I don't know who wrote this, but that's a banger sentence. <laughs> there, there, I can't fucking read it. Like most components. There's a strong <laughs> argument to be made that other classes need to be buffed to the same strength as the wizard. But for fuck's sake, why is 5e so goddamn allergic to drawbacks or negative trade-offs? The wizard and possibly paladin yeah. are the worst examples of this trend. Maybe I'll stop hating them when every time I come up with a caster idea, someone doesn't inevitably explain to me how a wizard can do it better with evidence to boot. Ooh, uh, damn, homie, who hurt you? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Hey, what? Who hurt you? I <laughs> did Gandalf like beat you as a child? <laughs> Matt, this screams one of your players. <laughs> uh, it Maybe? does. I it does. Well, yeah, none of my players really play wizard except for the one guy. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I want to say L take, but like the like I understand where the argument is coming from because how many times have you read on Reddit or YouTube comments of people complaining about wizards being the most broken class in the game? And yes, wizard gets a fuck ton of things, but there are yeah the health thing. I get that people are like oh you can mitigate that, but still it's only a D six dude. And most of the time, wizards uh, are trying to mitigate that. Besides health, you're trying to get armor, which nowadays, thanks to Tasha, is fucking easy. So you can be a wizard with 100 AC and no one bats an eye. Well, so but, I think the weird thing for me here is yeah. I have never once considered wizards the best class in the game. Like, ever. No, I don't think they're I, saying I, they're the fact, best class. I think they're saying they're the best cast. Well, sorry. Though. Correct. Correct. My bad. The best. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Oh. Uh I have never once considered Wizard the best caster. Most people to this day still consider that to be cleric. Because I, I would say, argue they have yeah. the least drawbacks. Because not only do they have overwhelming cosmic power, they have much higher AC in comparison and the mm -hmm. ability to take similar abjuration style spells. They have way more health. They have healing, which healing. yes, I know wizards I can technically heal, but like not really. Very they can little. bring people back from the dead. Like well, and I, they're physical I, fighters. I think the uh, the perception here of wizard being the best caster is because the, the limitation for cleric is the types of spells clerics get, because clerics don't tend to get as much of the uh, reality bending. Fuck you! I do what I want. You know, they don't get wish, for example, whereas wizards do. Uh, that's just one example, obviously. Uh, I, I think that becomes the perception is because wizards have such a massive spell list. They have literally the biggest spell list of anybody. So they have the most crazy, like, potential spell combos and world affecting type spells and magic they can do, which I think is where that perception of them being the best caster is. Are they the best caster in, like, a straight up knockout brawl? Maybe not. But are they the most, like, influential caster in the campaign? They they can be. Yeah. And I think it's it's easier for them to be. They also have the ability to, like, pick up additional spells as they go and shit. So, you know, there's that. I, I, I kind of agree with this. But I think the problem here is less of a. I think it's less about wizards, the, the class, not the company. Um, <laughs> I think it's less about the wizard class and more about their second comment towards the bottom, which is. Why is 5e so allergic to drawbacks or negative trade-offs? I think that's really the crux of the issue. Yeah. Because I think yeah. that's true. I think 5e has a distinct lack of, you know, because 
the way you balance, like the most basic level of game balance is if you can do an ability more often, it's less powerful. If you do an ability less often, it's more powerful. That is like mm. the most basic function of game balance, which is why I've always said Rangers favored enemy and favored terrain should be really, really strong because they don't come up very often. So no. the lack of the trade off thing, I think, is a lot more of the crux of the issue here than wizards specifically. And I kind of but I do kind of agree with both like the wizard doesn't seem to it doesn't feel like they have enough downsides like even the one they pointed out like wizards having being glass cannons now I, I would like to point out the perception that the wizard was a glass cannon back in the day the wizards were definitely made of glass back in the day but were they cannons debatable because there was a lot less big damage fuck you explosion spells back in the day than there is nowadays so the the cannon part of the glass cannon is a little debatable but yes like, it's true, wizards are a lot more durable than they were in older games. Uh, they they can mitigate their HP, they can get a lot of AC relatively easily. Like, that is supposed to be their primary limitation, right? They're supposed to have the least HP and be the easiest to hit, but it does kind of feel like you can mitigate and ignore those two problems these days pretty easily. You know, there's, you there's can. a part of me that wants, uh, that wants the wizard specifically regardless of whatever your race feature is, because, you know, there's some races like dwarves and hobgoblins that give you armor proficiency. Right, right. I kind of want the wizard class to, to have a distinct it. thing to be like, yeah, to override it. No I matter what that. your racial features are, you are not allowed to wear armor. Right, light armor like, only or whatever. Light armor, heavy armor, media, anything. Yeah. Even if you pick a feat, even if you have a you specific like race, race thing, nothing. You are not allowed. You have mage armor. I wouldn't hate that. And a ring of protection or cloaks of protection, magic items, boons. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the it. thing too, right? There's magic items to mitigate that problem. So doing something yeah. like that isn't even that unreasonable. The problem comes in when you have like people who are like, I'm going to play a Warforge wizard. Right, right. Uh, that has a cloak of protection, ring of right, protection, right. and fucking like, I have a plus eight shield and <laughs> now my AC yeah. is 100. Or not even a warforge. Or, you, know, you can have a hobgoblin, or mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever. Any dwarf. other race that gives you dwarf. Yeah, any other race that gives you armor proficiency. Yeah, yeah. I think it really does come down to that that issue of drawbacks or negative trade offs. It feels like, yeah, if wizards gonna have this fucking world ending cosmic ability, they should be made out of tissue paper, or they should have maybe more lit. Or, you know, there's other ways. Here's the thing. It doesn't have to be that they are easy to, to kill or whatever. There's other ways you can mitigate it. You know, it could be uh, ammo count, right? They could have more restriction on how often they could do stuff. Or there could be like a, um, a sort of magical stress mechanic where like system strain type thing, where if you do too, too yeah. many powerful spells... You know, you can't do as, you, you know, if you have, you can cast so many in a day and then you have to stop because it's too strenuous on your body. Like, there's lots of ways you could mitigate it and, like, create a trade-off system. But, yeah, right now there kind of isn't one. Arguably, there is spell slots, but as this person pointed yeah. out, long rest caster as opposed to what? A short rest caster? I mean, yeah. I Which, yeah. I mean, if you're playing a wizard, you have arcane recovery anyway. So Which you get, a, yeah, you get a little bit back and that's fine. I think arcane recovery is not a big deal. But yeah, it is true that most parties just long rest into oblivion. But of course, the long rest spell slot ammo and the long rest economy then goes back into the whole problem of wizards designed the game wizards of the coast this time wizards of the coast designed the game to work one way and then people play it a completely different way we know wizards of the coast was like six fights a day and most people are like what if i did one fight a day and wizards of the coast goes that makes the game not work and people go well i don't care i'm gonna do it anyway and then after doing that people go wizards why doesn't your game work and wizards goes we we told you the game wasn't going to no, work if you did that. <laughs> well, I don't even think it's people saying like, no, I only want one combat a day. It's no, combat it's not. takes a little it, while. It's, so it's, it's like just people what people end up doing. You mostly yes. only do one or two. <laughs> yes. Granted, you can extend out. Here's the thing. You can extend out an adventuring day over multiple mm. sessions in real life and shit. Like there are ways to go about it. People just don't. Yeah. So it's like I had a, I had a long I had a, I had a rather long conversation with Lita about this. There's a there's a whole there's ways to deal with that problem that people are just sort of not doing. 
and granted, mm. Wizards of the Coast is also not doing it. Like nobody's pl- nobody's no, playing nobody, nice yeah. on that particular subject. So I, I don't even we don't even need to get in that one. But you know, yeah, you know, so, it's funny. I, I actually know. uh I did a was it last uh, last session I had combat. I actually like looked at the time and I was like, how long does like an average round for me like and my players go? Oh, you timered it, yeah. I timed it. It was fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. For for six players yeah. plus me as a DM, uh, running three monsters that use the same stat block right and i was like fuck <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm like we and we had multiple encounters like that day and it was like each you know each encounter was about two or three rounds or so so it's like fuck man yeah it's, yeah, it's combat takes for a while. sure combat takes a while especially if you have less proficient players and you have more players you know there's all sorts of factors and stuff also mm-hmm. some people who are you know some people when their players just fucking don't pay attention and then you're like bob hey bob it's your turn and bob's like oh shit i was on fucking reddit what fuck what happened who's doing what who where's the boss yeah, dude i um i cast um i cast eldritch blast are you playing a barbarian this time oh shit um oh fuck um uh, i action search damn it bob <laughs> learn, learn your yeah. fucking character yeah so it, it's a whole thing basically i'm gonna <laughs> say i'm gonna let's put it this way I'm going to say W take on this, not because I think wizards are boring, because I don't necessarily think they're boring, but I do think there's a problem with the sort of trade off drawback situation for the wizard class. I think it's probably true of other classes, too, but it does feel it does feel a little more um, tangible with wizard for some reason. Mm. Not sure why I so I personally I disagree with this take. I'm not going to go as far as to call it an L. Because there are some good points brought up, but I still disagree with this. Um, not the like drawbacks thing. I, I completely agree with that. But like the wizard centric thing, I'm just like I, I just don't agree with the with, with the subject rather than the thesis. So I see, yeah. I see. I'm gonna give I, this a mid take. I would point out also the comment about the components as a drawback. Like yes, I. Yeah, yeah like, components. Components are- should components should feel like they matter more, and they just don't. No, I'll give you that. They don't. No, they they should do more with that. Now, gra- again, granted, I'm not saying I want to track every little component for every little spell I cast. That's not how you do that. But there's there is there is a design out there somewhere in the ether where you design a component pouch, a spell component system that actually generally feels like a trade off for for cool power. Yeah, and like most people, like I know my group. None of my players, I think, use component pouches. Everyone has, like, some sort of foci. I mean, a component pouch is just an arcane focus by another name anyway. No, I know, but I mean, like, no one uses components except unless it has a gold cost because yeah. that's, you know... Which you should enforce those thing. ones, by the way. You should oh, enforce yeah. the gold cost ones. A lot of people don't enforce those. You should. Yeah. Yes, Or, you like, should. um... What's the big one that most people fuck ignore? Banish? I think it's Banish or Fear, where it's, like, Probably. something that disgusts the creature... Yeah, I don't know. Or uh, summon demon, you know, the blood of, of someone you killed in the last 24 hours. Well, so those ones, remember, if they don't have a cost, they can be you, substituted. The blood yeah. thing you don't actually need. You use the blood thing to make a circle around yourself so it doesn't attack you. But most people don't even rule the, like, it doesn't attack you. It's like, oh, you summon a demon? Get ready. It's going to maul your shit just like anybody else. Yeah. Mm. Um... That being said, I'm a little annoyed that this person said with evidence to boot and then did not provide links or anything. I know they're not going to because it's not what I asked for, but you can't be like, I have receipts and then not. Well, begin I mean, come on, man. Receipts. <laughs> Were we going to read their receipts? Let's be real here. I actually might have. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, look, I, I'm not mad. I'm just they literally whoever this is pulled the fucking yeah well where's your uh what is it where are your sites and then he goes my sources that i made it the, made fuck, the up. fuck up like, yeah also yes matt you're correct the material component for a demon is a vial of blood from a humanoid killed within the past 24 hours however no gold cost so you can technically ignore it yeah uh yeah. kind of well again you you can only use that thing you have to draw the circle to not be attacked that's like the end part of the spell naturally you don't need any components uh, I s- using them as- oh as part of casting you can form a circle on the ground with the blood using it as a material component the circle is large enough to encompass your space while the space lasts the summon demon can't cross the circle or harm it and they can't target anyone within it using the material component in this manner consumes the spell oh yeah okay that's cool mm. that's fun 
I'm so glad they made the summon spells. They're so much fucking easier. That's a, I, I didn't realize all the summon spells actually have like material costs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, I think for yeah, the undead one, it's just like a gilded skull or some shit. Like I said, I I, I think it's sort of a W take. It's like a half yeah. W take for me. I don't think the wizard is so much the problem as it's the sort of general game balance of trade offs and negatives. But I'll still like, give it like the I w. said. Fair enough. Uh, my issue is just that the, the opening sentence, your literal thesis are wizards are boring as a class. So like, yeah, I don't know that wizards are boring per se. I don't I think, know that that's the right phrase. I think I'm just I'm going to give it an L, but I understand what they're talking about. <laughs> OK, so we I have one dub, statement, but it's wrong. <laughs> we have a dub, a mid and L. So I think we're just going to put this in mid. Uh, All right. I I'll give this spicy. I think this is pretty spicy. This feels spicy to me. Yeah, I think I think most people would call this spicy. Particularly with that opening vol- volley of wizards are boring. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right, we are going to roll it again. Hmm. Let's see where we is. Where we is? Ah, okay. I mean, this one's not. It might not tilt you, Josh, because we already went over something like this, but. <clears throat> Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. I'm just going to drop it for you to read. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A common complaint about D&D is that the rules are too rigid. Uh, oh, wait, did I miss? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, the rules are too rigid. But the books always say that rules are guidelines and can be broken and altered to a DM's discretion. Sometimes DMs feel that they have to alter or homebrew the setting so dramatically that... Uh, oh, sorry. Sometimes DMs that feel like they have to alter and homebrew the... Uh, the I can't read... <laughs> okay, start from the beginning. <clears throat> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. A common complaint about yes. D&D is that the rules are too rigid, but the books always say that rules are guidelines and can be broken and altered to a DM's discretion. Yes. Sometimes, DMs that feel like they have to alter and homebrew the setting so dramatically are just babies slash aren't creative enough to play with in the game's sandbox. Friend, I, I get what you're saying, but good lord. Uh, yeah, not the best phrasing on that sentence. sentence structure, please. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe mm-hmm. re- uh, proofread that one a little bit. Uh, uh, so I, I get what this person is trying to say. I do. My um, issue with this is, is that first and foremost, I feel like these the, these two things are different complaints. They are, yeah, that have yeah. been wrapped up into one. Yes, but we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it one sentence at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yes, people do complain that D and D is like weirdly rigid in places and really vague in others. Absolutely, yes. fair and enough. And it is. I think the important part of the, the important crux of the complaint is that it's rigid in strange spots. Like the rigidness yes. is not entirely consistent. Uh, yes, the uh, rules or guidelines and can be broken altered due to a DM's discretion. Yes, however, there is something to be said about, and this kind of goes into the second thing figuring out how the rules work within the constraint and not just changing things willy nilly. Yeah, you I should mean, almost we, never do that, especially if you haven't run the game uh, at least a decent amount. Right. Yeah, I mean, we, you can we, read we the books it. all you want. And then it like just because you read the rules does not necessarily mean you know how the game works. You know, how the game is supposed to work on paper, but the practicality of that can often be different. So well, you shouldn't just be like, I'm changing all these things because I read them and I don't like the way they sound. It's I like mean, you read the initiative rules, you don't like them, you're like, that's it, I'm throwing in my own rules with an initiative tracker and blackjack. Oh, God. Oh. Um, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I, I will say... There's no way for me to say this without wanking myself off a little bit here, so just buckle up, I guess. If you are someone who reads a wide plethora of games and have tried a lot of different games then you can get pretty good at reading a rule system, visualizing and and thinking about how it works in your head and getting a pretty good judgment on how it will or won't work, whether you like it or not. And the evidence I'm going to put forth here is we read through Daggerheart very recently. We literally had a Daggerheart session last week as of recording. Uh, sorry, not even last week. Last night, we had our dagger heart, first dagger heart session as of recording. Uh, and many of the things in the game that I thought when I read that I was either going to not like or have some fr- frustration with 
when we played, I did not like it and had frustration with it in play. So there is a degree that there is a there's a skill you can build up, especially if you listen to people who are like game uh, designers. They obviously are very, you know, wizard grandmasters at this skill. Um, but yes, Isaiah is also correct that, yeah, making things within constraints is always almost always going to get you something better and more interesting. And then once you have learned the rules, you can then break the rules more efficiently. This is the thing a lot of artists talk about where you have to learn your fundamentals and then students will sometimes see a professional artist who breaks a bunch of the fundamental rules and they'll be like, well, he doesn't follow the rules. And you go, yes, but he learned those rules very skillfully and masterfully and had a grasp on those rules. And then he broke them because he knew how to break them. That's where that whole thing comes in. So the complaints about the too rigidness is coming from people that are learning and trying to master this skill and have not yet. So they're trying to be within the rigidness. And then, as Isaiah pointed out, the second sentence is kind of a different complaint. <laughs> yeah. And to, to again, just. I, I agree with what you're saying. Even yeah, like if you have a breadth of of experience reading rules, obviously that gives you a leg up. You, I still think you should run it rules as written at least the first time or two. I think you should still really try know, to run. Like, yeah, you should still try to run a game yeah. rules as written just to see if nothing else. Just to yeah, see. That's kind of all if, I meant. It's like you shouldn't just change it on the rip. Just to test your hypothesis, if nothing else. Yes, scientific right, like, method and all that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. As far as the second thing goes, uh. Mighty presumptuous of you to just be like, well, you're just not creative enough. Um, watch it, bud. You know, uh, DMing is both incredibly easy and incredibly difficult at the same time. Um, and sometimes people just don't jive with a system. You know, like Josh is very vocal about not really jiving with Five E. <laughs> Me, uh, nah. And Having, having him as the dungeon master and playing for about four separate systems. Yeah. I mean, I could, he, despite the fact that he was explaining that he was struggling with 5e, that doesn't mean he's not creative. Like, we'd had some really cool shit go on with Star Wars and Blades and fucking Dungeon World. Like, watch out when, you, when you're when you're throwing those blanket statements on people, because you might catch something I, you didn't mean to. Yeah. Not to you know, put Josh on, on fucking spotlight. <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, I mean, it was relevant. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, I, I do think, I do think you're maybe being a little mean, a little, little snappy with this one. I don't know who wrote this, but you may or may not know me and you probably do know me in real life, given who submitted all these. Maybe just, you know, take it, take a breather, take five, you know, I'm just saying. Um, but I, I, I get what you're saying in that, you know. People often just want to homebrew the living shit out of a game as soon as they read it because it doesn't fit their perfect little ideal. They don't want to try and create within the, the confines. Yeah, people definitely have that knee jerk reaction, which, again, is why me and Isaiah are saying you should try to run it within those confines first. And then figure out, again, understand the rules so you can more effectively break the rules. Yeah. Especially Andrew, you go along. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. You don't have to do it all in one shot. You can make the changes as you go, as you yeah. play, as sessions go on, as the campaign continues. And, you know, that... Crap. Sentence. Too many sentences drumbled in my brain at once. What was I trying to... Oh, and I think what you'll find is that once you have... You'll find you have a better end product if you play the game as is first and then noodle with it later down the road. You will probably be more satisfied. Whereas if you find a game and then try to homebrew the crap out of it to fit exactly what you want up front, you're probably not going to homebrew it as effectively. And you're also probably going to put a lot of wasted effort in. Like you'll change rules that you think you need to change that you didn't actually need to change. They could have just been left alone or something. And then... Now you have all this wasted effort and you probably didn't homebrew it as well. And the stuff you should have focused on, you didn't focus on. So you probably will just get a better. And when I say product, I mean, I don't mean like 
product Experience. to sell. But you'll get a better, like, yeah, you'll get a better campaign, a better time if you sort of understand then change as opposed to just change out the gate. I think something else that people often don't take into account is rules are often very tightly interwoven with one another. <laughs> yes. If you just start changing things willy nilly, uh, something yeah. is going to break that interaction, right? You're going to have a hole in the chain link and that's going to be a problem. I actually, so, I mean, Paladin, you listen to this. We've talked about this before. Paladin wants to start running um, the Avatar RPG. And I've like he, several times he's been like, I don't really like the way that the game does this. And I haven't read enough into it, but I, I take his word for it. But I am always being, I, I'm, I always tell him like, hey, I, I get that it probably is weird. Let's run it as is before we try to make any changes to it. Like, let's just let it rock for a few rounds. Heaven or hell, uh, something, something, change society. Yeah. <laughs> society knew they could not blame no, humanity wait, knew they knew could they not could change, society. change society so it's, never mind they anyway. blamed the beast <laughs> there's a whole second after that speech <laughs> i know there is yeah it's in the song um okay. anyway yeah it, 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 it rules have a the rules in rpg systems especially a complex especially a more complex game like a D or a pathfinder which are both you know quite tightly interwoven systems I, I don't know what to call this, but there's like games have this knock on effect where you change one little rule and you think it won't be a big deal. And then you find all these other things that it interacts with. And now you're cha you went from changing one rule to changing like four or five rules to make the initial rule change still work. You know, a classic example will be, you know, let's say, I don't know. What's a good idea? Basically, you'll you'll change a rule. I can't think of an example off the top. Of my head. I was trying to think of a D and D example that people usually do. Oh, actually, <laughs> I just here we go. R Rogue sneak attack. Let's bring <laughs> up that. Let's bring up that old gem, right? Uh, it's rewind time. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, GMs love to look at rogue sneak attack and nerf it because they feel like it gives the rogue at lower levels this insane damage output that no other class could possibly do. And it's just ridiculous that the rogue could do so much damage for basically free and every single turn with no restriction. I mean, there's some restriction, but they could do it every turn pretty reliably. What, but what the GMs in question that do this often don't realize or notice because they haven't run the game or they haven't run the game enough or they haven't gotten to high enough level, whatever it might be, that the rogue sneak attack is there to uh, balance out or to uh, what's the word I'm looking for to, to make up for the fact that they don't get stuff like extra attack. They don't get the better, heavier weapons. They're probably not going to use a lot of the more damaging magical weapons. They're not going to get abilities like action surge. There's all these other things that the other marshals pick up. You know, rogues don't have reckless attack. Rogues don't have rage. Rogues don't have divine smite. So it's like, mm sneak attack is to help them keep up with all that other crap down the road but if you haven't played a lot of DD, that's not going to be immediately apparent so you'll you'll read through the rules and be like oh well i'm gonna nerf the rogue sneak attack a little bit because it seems too good and I i've read the rules i get i get how it works but you don't realize that oh no it actually it actually keeps pace with a lot of the other abilities in the game and then you play the game and then you realize, oh, my rogue is an uh, is kind of a worthless piece of crap at level 10 and everybody else is making the rogue look like a complete loser. Oh, no, the rogue player doesn't want to play anymore. Why do you hate me? Oh, oh, I think he's slashing my tires. Oh, oh and he's <laughs> and he's lighting my grass on fire. Well, that's a that's a bit much. Um, So it's like that kind of knockout effect thing is always a problem. So, yeah, like. Be careful going straight to the homebrew gun and just pulling the trigger immediately. I don't know if I'm giving this person a W or an L. Like, I kind of want to agree with them, but they were kind of mean about it, so I kind of don't want to agree with them. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I just like, I, yeah, I, I agree with the, with the sentiment of like, you know, they're they're basically being like, you know, work within the constraints. It's not impossible. You can do it. Yeah, like, yeah. I agree with that. I. I'm going to have to give this another uh, meh because it was not 
the message was not given in a a coherent, not coherent, but like a, a cohesive way. And I just feel like there were several ideas that kind of mashed together by the end product. I'm gonna give this a yeah. meh, not quite spicy, but meh. I, I, yeah. I, I, Mid. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess it's a melee. I guess that's where I'm at. All right, another meh. Well, I I hope I hope you're happy, person who put that one. You got us fucking yapping. True. <laughs> All right, we gonna run it back again. Oh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> Matt, this was definitely one of your players. I don't know. Oh, baby. Give Rangers back their 3.5 slash Pathfinder favored foe mechanics. Hunter's Mark sucks. I don't know what they're. I, yeah, I don't know how it worked I, before. Yeah, I, I don't either. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I want Hunter's Mark to, again, I've, I've said it multiple times on this podcast. Make Hunter's Mark shouldn't be a spell, it should just be a Ranger feature. You should just be able to do it. You do it a couple times a day. Fuck the concentration. Like it. I it's mean, annoying. they basically did do that. Um, no, I think it still has, doesn't still have concentration. Oh well, it yes, does, yes. Favorite, it does still have concentration. The favorite which is very foe. Dumb. Yes, so they turned yeah, it favorite into foe. A, favorite foe then, is the ability in Tasha's. Yes, it still has concentration, but no, it's not a spell. Honestly, though, here's the thing, though, Matt, you're not necessarily wrong that, you know, maybe it should just be an ability and it shouldn't have concentration, but that doesn't really make the ability suck less. That just makes it slightly more viable. It still kind of sucks as an ability. It's still not very exciting. Well, no, because <laughs> it gives because every most classes have some way of dealing extra damage as a very low, low bar to go past. Rangers shouldn't have to go through a hoop of. It takes my bon like, yeah, it takes my bonus action. Okay, that's not a uh, far bar to the jump. But then I also have to concentrate on it, which means I can't use any of my other spells that have concentration. And oh, look, the ranger has a million fucking concentration spells. I hate this. Like, it, you know, I, I, it, it's I, annoying. It's an I, annoying I, bar that they have to cross just to be able to I, do 1d6 or 1d8 damage. I don't know. I this actually have the opinion. And shit. This would right. be a lot better if we knew how the 3.5 version worked. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, do that now. Right. But like, um, so real quick, I'm sort of of the opinion. I might be alone in this, oh boy. but I feel like we like Hunter's Mark should stay, but we should also get a separate ability that takes the place of it. Like, just make it a level one ranger, but because I like, I don't know, I kind of like Hunter's Mark as, a, as an idea. Like, it's kind of like Hex where I like its utility, but okay. the second half of it kind of sucks and the utility being its damage. Um, but what do you mean we should get another ability also, though? So le let Hunter's Mark be a spell that other classes can take. Uh, oh. right? In the same way that I want Eldritch Blast to still be a thing, because if I, for example, want to take some uh, magic initiate, let's say as like a I did this when I, was, I played a blood hunter. I played the profane soul and I got some stuff from Warlock, but I wanted more stuff. So I took um, magic initiate and then took Eldritch Blast. I don't want to not be able to take that ability, but I do want Warlocks and, and Rangers to have a equivalent ability that gives them their own unique niche protection that isn't just a spell. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I kind of get what you mean. Um, let, let's. So Matt just posted the 3.5 version, which by the way, immediately looking at this, my eyes just fucking rolled into the back of my head. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, my wait, so God. I, let, let's, uh, uh, so Mark of the Hunter, complete divine type yeah. divination, level three <laughs> component. My immediate per question. What does complete divine mean? What the fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> Casting time, one standard action. Range okay. medium is, 100 is feet plus 5, 10 feet divided yes. by level. <laughs> yeah, that one. I mean, I get it. That one is so that the the distance scales with your level. That I get. Yeah, I, no, I, yeah, I get it. It's just funny. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I think it's 10 feet. That's 10 feet per level, not divided by level. Oh, yeah. Okay, 10 feet per level. Uh, yeah. Target one creature, which must be the favored enemy favored of the enemy caster. Of the ca so you can only 10 minutes use per it level. on favored enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, saving throw will negates. So I'm assuming they mean willpower save negates. Negates the ability, probably. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, MCDM has this too. And then, thing oh, like save oh, so if you will save, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, if no. you're proficient with will saves, you just auto succeed. I think. I don't think that's what that means. <laughs> I think no, that I think means, it it, means if you, I think it means it if you have a saving throw. If you if you the make throw, the save then, throw, it yeah. turns it off. Oh. It turns it off. I think is yeah, what yeah, that's yeah. saying. Uh, spell resistance, yes. I don't know what spell resistance. I couldn't even begin to guess on that one. Uh, makes it harder to dispel slash counter. Maybe. Uh, by pointing your finger at a favored enemy of yours, you mark it with a glowing rune that only you can see. Your favored enemy bonuses against a foe with a mark of the hunter. But sorry, your favored enemy bonuses against a foe with a mark of the hunter are plus four higher than they would be otherwise. That's written kind of weird. Yeah. Furthermore, the rune lim limbs. I, I, I'm assuming that's a shorthand for luminates. No, uh, your enemy. It, it it's a word limb depict or describe in a painting or word. Oh, huh. so like outlines. Yeah, basically suffuse uh, or highlight something with a bright color or light. Oh, yep. yeah. So outlines it, uh, making him easier for you to see. How do you? How, why is it a him? Hmm? In game? Why is it him? Hmm? All right, all right, relax. Fuck you, three five. All right, relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, making him easier for you to attack. Attack. The subject of a mark of the hunter gains no bonuses to armor class against your attacks from any cover less than total cover, nor does it gain a mischance uh, against your attacks from any concealment less than total concealment. Other effects that grant a mischance, such as incorporealness, work normally. Material component. A bit of skin or bone from the relevant favored enemy type. Okay. I mean, okay, so basically to translate it to, to, to simplify a little bit, you get a plus four bonus to attacking them, uh, and they don't get benefits from cover, and if they try to conceal themselves, you can still see them because magical glowy rune thing. You get no this, bonus from armor class, which is kind of cool. Well, I think what that... I don't think that means it ignores their armor. Or against I think what, cover. Oh, yeah. Against yeah, yeah, right, cover, right. yeah. So I think it's saying their AC doesn't go up if they're behind, like, a hip-high wall type thing. I think that's what that means. I, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm. this is not that different. I mean, the, the no bonuses from cover, Hunter's Mark doesn't do that. That would be kind of cool. But, like... Oh, this doesn't give any extra damage, though, which Hunter's Mark does. I don't know. I mean, I don't know so that I'd say this easier is to hit them. easier to hit them. Yeah. I, I don't know that this f is that much better. Yeah, no, I don't. Now, I don't know. Like, if, if, if anything, it's it's in some ways, it's a little worse. Like, yeah, they're easier to hit, assuming that they're using cover, but it has to be a favorite enemy. Yeah, well, I don't. You probably had more of those in three point five. I would imagine, like your list of favorite enemies was probably longer. I bet. Maybe. I I I, I would, would be willing to bet. Um, and then like, uh, I mean, yeah. There's so I don't know if concentration was a mechanic in three point five or not. So we can't really comment on the lack there. The, you know, the lack of concentration, but. I don't know. I, like I, I get it's different. I guess. Meh. Like. Eh. <laughs> I don't. I don't really. Oh no! They do not get more favorite enemies. They get five total. No, four total. Well, that's more than oh. you get in five e. Or no, one. Uh, wait. One at level one. One at level five. Ten. Oh, don't fifteen. You get four twenty. In five e. So you get five total. Versus oh. ranger, what? which no, you is. Don't get Ranger, you get one or two. No, there's a, well, there's that's a, what I'm saying. In 3.5, you, you get five total. Yeah, that's that's more than 5e. 5e, you get like one or two. Right? I thought you get uh, four, because then when you hit a certain level, you get to pick two more. I don't yeah, think check you it, hold on. four. It's been a minute, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's been a minute. But um, uh, I'm going to say I agree with the Hunter's Mark sucks but i i don't i'm not 100 on the whole 3.5 pathfinder thing i uh, i do want hunter's mark to be better i think hunter's mark and 5e should be better i don't think it should work like 3.5 version because that i don't know that i mean 
Like, I mean, maybe I'm trying. To th- Although, I, I, maybe you know, maybe I think it maybe take the ability to sort of ignore cover with the enemy. That that's a fun little tack on cool. you could do for the five yeah. E version. Yeah. Also, so double checking five E Rangers get three. You get oh, one yes. additional oh, okay. one at six and fourteen. I don't remember what the one D&D's nuts hunters mark does. Uh, it was largely unchanged, although I think it wasn't concentration anymore. It, think. I, I think, think so, but then they changed it back. I don't. I, I don't fucking remember. Don't, you know, I kind of forgot about the 2024 rules. I'm be honest. Uh, I'm trying to find the PDF so I don't know. now. I don't know. This this solidly sits in the meh camp for me. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm choosing. I'm choosing fighting today. I'm gonna say this is an L. An L. I don't Ooh. see. Yeah, no, I. They're marginally better in 3.5, but they have a bunch of other stipulations. And while stipulations are cool, when the ability isn't great to begin with, meh. It is worth pointing out Rangers got a lot more stuff in general in 3.5, though, too. True. But that's, that doesn't necessarily. This was only talking about the one ability, so. Oh, wait, sorry. Favorite foe mechanics. Are they talking about favorite? Hold on. There might be a different thing. I don't think they're talking about Hunter's Mark. Oh, I think, wait, what? Yeah, they are favored foe mechanics. Hunter's Mark sucks. So they're just stating Hunter's Mark sucks. Favorite. Hold on. Let me read the favored foe mechanics. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's two different things. They're comparing oh. killing us. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait. You're not comparing the same thing because you would. So uh, di- were they trying to say favored enemy? Was they were trying to compare it to 5e's favored enemy? Because that's different. Okay, all right, I guess we'll read this now. Okay. At first level, a ranger may select a type of creature from among those given on tape on the, the table. Oh, on table, rangered favorite enemies. I okay. am the table. The ranger gains a plus two bonus on bluff, listen, sense, motivate, spot, and survival checks while using skills against creatures of this type. My god, 3.5, and it's skillless. Um,. Likewise, they get a plus two bonus on weapon damage rolls against its creature. Okay, I like that. I like just flat bonus damage to their favorite enemy. I like that. At fifth level and every five levels after 10, 15, and 20, the ranger may select an additional favorite enemy from those given on the table. Uh, In addition, at each such interval, the bonus against any one favorite enemy, including the one just selected if so desired, increased by two. If the ranger chooses humanoids or outsiders as a favorite enemy, he must also choose an associated subtype as indicated on the table. If a specific creature falls into more than one category of favorite enemy, the ranger's bonuses do not sack. He simply uses whichever bonus is higher. Um, I would say, okay, so if the, okay. If the person who did this mistyped and meant to say favored foe, compared to 5e's favorite enemy then i will say yes i think the 3.5 favorite foe one is a little bit better sure if they didn't mistype and they're just shitting on hunter's mark for no particular reason i i I mean i i I guess Uh, who hurt you (laughs) yeah i'm trying to like i just checked the paizo like uh Paizo Ranger and 3.5 Ranger, they don't have a favored foe ability. Like at all. Isn't that what you just posted? So they have favored at favored foe. I think they're talking about favored foe. Um like they use the phrase favored foe. I think they're talking about the like additional rules favored foe for Ranger. No, they said give Rangers back their 3.5 favored foe mechanic. They're talking about the no, old I- 3.5 one. No, I know there is no favored foe mechanic. I just checked. Well, they probably there's they, fav- pro- they probably meant favored enemy. They probably just used the wrong word. Yeah, I think uh, they just probably I, yeah. I, they I just, just didn't proofread their sentence. <laughs> we 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 are confused. Uh, so I'm looking at the one D and D's nuts hunters mark. Uh, it's still concentration. Lasts an hour now. So oh, that's nice. That's right. Does a D six force damage. Right, right. Um. And then you have advantage on wisdom perception checks to find them. And then if the draw target drops to zero, you have bonus action to move it. Um, I mean, the 1d6 force damage is nice, but the you have advantage on finding the perception check. Well, you already just, had that. 
Yeah, just make it the fucking other thing. Just make it like you always can the, give, get rid of the cover. Like, what the fuck? I I don't know. Yeah, yeah but I think this person didn't proofread their sentence enough because now I'm confused what the hell they're even trying to say. Are they trying to compare the old? Are they trying to compare Mark of the Hunter 3.5 versus 5E's Hunter's Mark? Or are they trying to compare 3.5's favorite enemy versus 5E's favorite enemy? I don't know what kind of comparison we're trying to make. Or did they? are they just saying favorite enemy from 3.5 is what 5E Ranger should have? Also, Hunter's Mark sucks. I don't know. Could you please clarify in the comments, person who wrote this, what the heck you meant? No. Yeah, well, I'm begging you. I'm begging and you. here, you know what? I'm going to answer all three. If you're saying... Favorite enemy, the 3.5 version is better than the 5e version. I will agree with you. If you are saying the 3.5 Mark of the Hunter is better than 5e's Hunter's the Mark, I will say sort of, kind of. And then if you're saying they should have the 3.5 favorite enemy rules, also, I just hate Hunter's Mark. I mostly, I half agree with you and half disagree with you. Okay. Well done. I. This is kind of mean, but I almost feel like I don't want to put this on. <laughs> I'm just. Confused. I feel like. I yeah, I feel like we can't put this on the list because now we're confused about exactly which mechanics they're referring to. <laughs> now, yeah. granted, in this person's defense, the fact that all of the mechanics have such incredibly close naming systems to each other, like they all sound really similar, but aren't exactly the same is not this person's fault so like i don't yeah. necessarily blame you on that one because yeah, like fair. you know the fact because 5e has an ability called favorite foe and an ability called favorite enemy right like that's kind of fucking annoying so yeah all right sorry be good it must be uh it, it is abstained from the list <laughs> apologies i guess into the yeah. dungeon <laughs> and rolling it. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, what? Right. <laughs> okay. Oh no! Disney came for us. <laughs> God, God, Disney Limbiscuit <laughs> team up. That would be amazing. Avengers, <laughs> the Dark Avengers. All right, we have potions should heal more, but should take a full round to drink. Absolutely not. I'm okay with that. A full um, round? They already Hell take no. a full what, what Isaiah, they already take a full round to drink. What are you on about? They take an action to drink. Uh, I, I think that's what they meant. I, let's, yeah, because because if it's a full round, it'd be like, all right, I use my turn, I drink a potion. At the end of the round, then the healing works. Oh, means, you think oh, you think they mean that the healing would would trigger at the end of the round? Yeah. I, I think what they're well, saying that, is that you drink the potion, you cannot move, you cannot bonus action, your your turn's done. Oh, see, that wasn't the... I thought they were just saying it should take an action, which it already does. It already does, yeah. yeah. No, I, I think... I don't know about if it takes, like, your entire, like, movement, bonus action, everything yeah, to heal, but, like, if it's that, super dumb. If it's the... I waste my action and then my healing doesn't go off at the end of the round. Also really dumb. Also, are they used it when they say round? Did they did were, did they mean to say turn? Well, yeah, because those are two different things. Uh, well, a turn is your specific a turn is your turn. turn, and turn and round and is the whole initiative. Yeah, line. So yeah I, no, no, well, that, Matt, that would Matt. be even worse. If it takes a full round to drink, is that therefore mean that you do also do not have reactions? Well, here's the thing, Matt. We understand the the distinction you just made. I don't know if the person who type to type this either a doesn't know that there's a distinction or b just used the wrong word by accident. Into Wait, the unknown mid dungeon for you. What are you doing? It's a it's four ounces of liquid, bud. Are you butt chucking? <laughs> that should not take you six full fights. <laughs> well, no, actually, well, there's that Bob World Builder yeah, video where he yeah. actually like it's actually kind of hard to drink hard something to, in six seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Even butt chugging, it's yeah. super hard to drink. It a is full actually, it actually is pretty hard. But it's, it's see, but he's drinking it. At, I know that it shows it out of like a stop, like a uh, uh, a a tapered like flask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you have like. 
put four ounces in a cup, you'll slam that shit in a second. That's true. <laughs> that's true. I, t- uh, I, the the flask does make it a little different. That's that's. Yeah. I always I always imagine. I know that people always like like the the heavy bottomed like the bottlenecked sort of uh, glass Flask. file. Yeah. I always think of like, you know what I'm talking about when I say this, the shot glass in a test tube. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. That's no, how I, I always no imagine. It's just like a big test tube with a cork in yeah, it. Yeah. 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 So you yeah, pop right. that cork and just glug it and it's down. That would like, be, that would be faster to drink. Although you know. like just a vial or something like a big vial. That's what, that's what he's saying, Matt. Oh, is that have what you, you never oh, met, wait, no, I, Matt? Have you never taken a test tube shot? Uh, where they're no. in the long cylindrical, like scientific-looking test tubes. No. Hold I, on. This feels weird that you've never come across these, but okay. Uh, 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 okay, I'm gonna be really charitable and assume what this person is saying is they should heal more, but use up your These turn. So. Yeah, those. Yeah, no, I haven't taken a shot out of one of those. Oh, okay, people take shots out of those all the time. They're great. They it's like a club fuck thing. you up, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a club thing to do. Um, yeah. Because it's a double shot or a th- yeah. triple shot. It's maybe? a triple, yeah. Triple shot, it's, it's technically. Four and a half, sh- uh, four and a half ounces. It's a lot. Yeah. I've done um, the funnel. I've done the keg stand. I haven't done one of these. Okay, well, yeah, add it to the list. Um, yeah. uh, taking the charitable assumption on this, they should heal more, but take your entire turn. Um, I'm kind of okay with that. Assu- I would assume you, I mean, you could still move and shit, but you know, take up your turn. Basically, it would take a action and a bonus action to heal more, but you still could like move and use a reaction once your turn's over. I would be okay with that. But if they're saying, if they're saying it should take an entire round, which is to say the healing doesn't go off until the end of the round, which is yeah, to say like, once everyone's done their turn, everyone else has done their turn, that yeah. I think is a bad idea because that yeah, means... Like, ima- imagine this, like you're in combat, you drink the potion, you wait, the death knight shows up, touches your giblets, you get knocked out, end of the round, your potion wakes, you know, wakes you up and you're like, sick, I'm prone now, I hate this. If you well, if you even rule it that way, or would the ruling be that if you go down before the end of the round, the healing just doesn't proc, right? Like it depends on how you rule it. That'd be even worse. That'd be even worse. So it's like, yeah, no. If the person is saying that the healing should not proc until the entire round is over, that I'm not 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 on board with. But if they're saying, have you guys ever been in combat with someone? (laughs) Sorry. Have you guys ever been in combat with someone who's tried to cast prayer healing in combat? No. No. Yeah, <laughs> stupid fucking. I mean, you know, listen, Matt. Uh, is reading. this from experience, Matt? Re- yes. Reading oh. is hard. Re- reading is hard. Yeah, reading reading's hard. And we're like, dude, just stop casting and do something else. He's like, no, don't worry, guys. This is going to be omega healing, big brain move. And it's like, no, dude. No, it's not. It, it takes 10 minutes to cast. Please help. <laughs> is it 10 minutes? I thought it was one minute. Oh, is it one minute? Maybe it's one minute. Hold on. I don't oh, know. Let me check. Let me check. I don't actually know. And he was in um, the fight was over before he cast the spell and then someone attacked him and he lost concentration. So, yep. him. Nice. Yep. Uh, prayer of healing. Ten minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. Jesus Christ. Yeah, look, but I'm uh, sorry. Uh, even in the most charitable situation, that's a meh. So I'm going to go with the no and call it an L for me. Yeah, same. I'm ta- I'm making the nicest up. Look, like I said, one version I agree, one version I disagree. Oh, I don't know. Proofread your stuff, people. Yeah, please proofread your stuff. They're confusing the shit out of us. And, and I'm a, I'm gonna uh, I'm, I'm gonna say no spice and no spice, no nice spicy. I because uh, eh. it, it's not like it. Everyone says healing potions should do more. Like I would, you know, I would almost argue that healing potions no. shouldn't necessarily heal more and should instead just have more re- a more reliable distribution curve of healing. Uh, that uh, so okay. I Which want just to either, say like add it, additional dice or something like that. There's a couple ways you can do that, but yeah. well, you can't go lower than a d4. No, no, add dice, add dice. No, I know, so but if you, if, you, do. if you if you add dice, it's going to heal more no matter what. That's what, yeah, no, 
No, no, because what I'm saying is if it ha I'm saying it should have a more consistent. So take away the plus because it's like because like a basic healing potion is what? Like four, two D four plus ten or whatever, right? To be four, take, uh, two D four plus, plus two. It's definitely maybe what I'm saying. What, what I mean is like it should be the number should just be more consistent. So like. Yeah, it's 2d4 plus 2. Okay, so instead of it being 2d4 plus 2, you could make it 4d4 and no plus 2. You know, you could increase the dice pool so the distribution curve is a little more towards the middle. You know what I mean? Or, alternatively, you go the opposite direction. You do less dice, but a, a higher flat bonus. So you could do like 1d4 plus 6, for example. Either way... I'm just saying it should be a little bit more even, you know, maybe have a, uh, you know, a higher ceiling. Obviously, 4d4 would have a higher ceiling potential, but like still, although actually, no, it wouldn't it would have a lower ceiling potential because 4d4 can only go up to or no, no, higher. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Higher, higher, higher. Sorry. Thinking. So my thing fast. is, is either right. Make it a more reliable heal pool and drop the price of it a little bit. 50 gold pieces for 2d4 plus 2 is ridiculous. Granted, yes, I know that there's almost nothing to spend gold on. I get it. But the amount that you're spending versus what you're getting doesn't really add up. Um, rather, if you want it, uh, yeah, so like, for me, may, healing potion as is should cost less and take a bonus action because it's not a lot of healing. If you want it to do more, I'm totally fine with it taking a full action. If you make it do like significantly more, just as the lowest level, sure. Let it take an, let, let it take your action bonus, and then keep the price as is. But as it is now, shit just don't work. I mean, it works. It's just a little underwhelming. Yeah, like it does. I, know, the I feel job. like I'm the only one. I I don't mind it. Like <laughs> it's fine. It does the job. Because in the three year game, I did the half price and a bonus action, and it was too much. Yeah, you know, it was too much. What I do now is it's like, again, the cost is, you know, whatever, 50 gold. Um, but now it's you have the one you can save as a and use that one as a bonus action. The rest of your potions for that combat is, you know, uh, a regular action. Yeah, you have one. Which, yeah, which most most of the time the players never end up using more than the, one. Yeah, more than one. So. Yep. Yeah, uh, uh, Worlds Without Number actually, and Stars Without Number has a pretty cool system for this, where you have um, you have stowed equipment and you have readied equipment. So stowed equipment is stuff that's like in your backpack, and that mm -hmm. takes a full action to pull out. But you can have a certain number of readied equipment, and that would only take a. They call it an on turn action in that game, but it's effectively a bonus action. So you mm -hmm. could ready like if you could have three uh, three. I forget what they call it exactly three load or whatever worth of stowed items. You could stow three healing potions and use those three as a bonus action. If you wanted, you know, oh, you would nice. decide that before. So like you can actually <laughs> decide what you want to be the quick pull thing and what you don't Now, Obviously one of those is probably going to be your weapon, uh, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think potions do feel a little underwhelming, but they kind of do the job. Their primary job is to just get somebody up off the fucking floor anyway, which they do. So, you know, eh. pretty meh. I guess it's a pretty meh take for me. Uh, this kind of makes me sad. I feel like we had a we had all the, the W takes uh, last week. What happened? Yeah, I know. That's what we, know. <laughs> we had all the... We had all the ones we agreed with or liked, and then this one's just like, eh, eh, eh. eh. Well, would help if we were a little more clear on what they were trying to say. True. I can't wait till the next one's like, action surge, bad. Oh, no, we did have that one, actually. Did we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did yeah, have that actually, one. I just realized, I'm like, wait a minute, we did have that. <laughs> I, was it just action surge, bad? I don't remember. No, uh, it was action something Action surge like should action. be a level five ability. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. I'm trying to think of something like anyway roll it yeah roll it rolling it wait did you and isaiah both give it an l yeah or i gave it an l i don't know i mean isaiah definitely did yeah okay and we are at 
I do like Baldur's Gate is a the elixir. I wish elixirs elixirs were like are a, a fun separate. idea. Yeah. 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 Where it lasts for the wall rest. Oh God. Oh Christ my so fucking God. Oh Jesus Christ. People. Can you <laughs> yeah, this one actually might be longer chill. than the wizard one. This is longer it for is. sure. It is by a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh Jesus. Okay. Christ. <clears throat> okay. All right. You ready? You got this, Isaiah? You doing this? I hope so. Do you want uh, me to do it? Yeah, your throat? No, I'm going to I'm going to give it a shot okay. first. Okay. I'm going to give it a shot. All right. All right. When a player is trying to, in quotations, do something, they should be given, in quotations, multi-skill options to choose from when rolling for the result. Whether seeing if they detect enemies, being able to understand what magic is in an item or trap, or recalling a piece of information that their character may know. These sort of things that allow for a player to either go with the basic skill or something that is different but better aligns with their character and or their backstory. For instance, when investigating a murder scene, you can only give anyone who wants to investigate an investigation check, in quotations. Or, you could let the druid have the option to investigate or perform a nature check to utilize their connection with nature while giving the sorcerer, with a noble background, the options to uh, for an investigation check or a history check since their background since in their background, they have actually witnessed a similar murder, but may have repressed those memories. This also allows the players to piece different parts of a puzzle together, build teamwork, and give incentives for everyone to be able to use their characters beyond their basic roles. Obviously, this isn't the best for roleplay heavy groups, but it could also be used for dungeon delving or monster slaying groups that just want to kill, get experience, and become more powerful. Even then, you can still use this principle of multi-skill options for skill checks as well. For example, if a player needs to scale a wall slash cliff to escape some danger, base rules in 5e say that the uh, to only use athletics because it's a strength based skill to uh, yeah a strength based task to climb stuff. But if you want to give the option to use acrobatics, but with a higher difficulty challenge, then dex based characters also have a chance to succeed when utilizing that they are, what they are good at. Um, this person so this, should play Dungeon World. This person should this, play Dungeon World. This is literally in the rules though. Sort this of. Is literally described. Mm, not exactly. Not exactly. So this, this is one of those DM facing things where, like, as a DM, you, in your head, you can think of like, all right, maybe more check. You know, I can think of like instead of investigation, maybe, like, if a player comes up with one this idea, this idea, but then it's up to the player again. You throw the ball at the players, and they have to come up with the idea and throw it back at you. Like, I have a player who specifically, anytime I have a check. They always ask, hey, Matt, can I use this skill instead because and they give me X, Y and Z reason. And if it makes sense, then I'm like, yeah, most of the time I, I say, yeah, because it does make sense. But if it's like a specifically hard task, I might just be like, no, unfortunately, you have to use this. So it's it, it's half and half for me. Like, I agree with this some like 80 percent of the time, 90 percent of the time. But. I think there should be checks where like the multi-skill option is not viable. Multi-skill option should be viable most of the time, but not all the time. This person should also play Daggerheart. <laughs> I'm just saying Daggerheart literally tells you to do exactly this. Mm. Yeah, saying. wait, right here. It says, it says in the player's handbook, not the Dungeon Master's Guide, variant, skills with different abilities. Normally no, that's your not what they're saying. That's not what they're saying. That's not what they're saying. I knew, I knew you were going to read that section. That's not what this person is saying. This person is saying what you were about to read says you can swap out the ability score tied to the skill. So, for example, the classic barbarian uses strength plus intimidation as opposed to charisma plus intimidation. What this person is saying is give me the option to use a skill that is non-traditional if I can argue why it makes sense. So for like the, the example, investigation game, normally check in investigation yeah. check on the murder, but instead the sorcerer can use a history check because it ties into their background. Yeah. Not the same thing. Similar, but not exactly the same thing. Yeah. Y you you, fo you follow me there, Isaiah? I'm yeah. Uh, I feel like I, I've seen this somewhere. I've seen this exact same thing somewhere. I think this Dun is Dungeon in the World. player's handbook somewhere. No, it, no it, it's it's <laughs> somewhere in 5e. I know it is. I've seen it. I, I don't think it is, but yes, I think this is a perfectly fine thing to do. And I think many other games do it. Um, and I think you can also here's the thing. Like Matt said, you can this can be a give and take type situation because 
if a player wants to do something and they're like, well, I know this would be, you know, the athletics versus, versus acrobatics. I know this would normally be an athletics role. Can I use acrobatics instead? And the GM says, sure, fine, go for it. If you give them a good enough reason, you know, you, you should you should always try to justify it. But yeah, sure. there's the uh, th- do you mm-hmm. ever watch that video from uh, a Dan, the cartoon where it's just like, DM, can I can I try to perceive the emotional intentions of the guard? You want <laughs> you mean you want to make an insight check? No, 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 no DM. I want to use my perception to use my superior eyes to see his emotional intent on my character stealing from that old lady right across the street. And DM's like, okay, well, you perceive that the guard stabs you and you die. Uh, yes. Oh, that is, yeah, I found it. Hold I mean, on. Yeah. <laughs> oh so it's under the dungeon. Ma- it's it's in the dungeon master's guide under the uh, running the game skills section. So it says, as described in the player's handbook, a skill proficiency represents a character's uh, focus on one aspect of an ability among all the uh, among all the things a character's dexterity score describes. The character might be particularly skilled at sneaking around, reflecting in proficiency, so on and so forth. It go on, it goes on to say at the end, often players ask whether they can apply a skill proficiency to an ability check. If a player can provide a good justification for why a character's training and aptitude in a skill should apply to a check, go ahead and allow it regarding the player's creative thinking. It literally tells you to do this. Um, Technically, yeah, it's sort of... I- the wording on that that you read off just it, it says it but, in not so many words, but like right, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a little different. It, it, it does seem to be implying this, but again, what I was gonna say is this can be a give or take thing where yes, you can allow the person to climb the wall using acrobatics, but conversely, in a different situation, you can also say to players uh, because you know a lot of GMs hate it when players are like. Can I make a history check? Oh, can I make a history check? Oh, can I? And then every player is making a history roll. You can also do the thing where only somebody who is proficient can make a history roll in this scenario. That's kind of the inverse of this. Uh, so yeah, if that. you if you make it a give or take, I think it's fine. Uh, just, you know, you just got to be reasonable with it and just don't allow players to, you know, roll perception to sneak or whatever. You know, like... You know, you, you be reasonable with it, and it's a back and forth. If you want more granularity as a player, the GM should also be able to get a little more granularity on the other end of the table when they think it makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with doing this, but be aware it's not a one-sided... I I generally do not like to do a thing where players just get automatically we're better and cooler now without some kind of trade-off on the other side of the table. You know, I'll be like, you get to be better and cooler. I get to do this. That's generally how I do these sorts of things. Can you but hear, yeah, for I, instance? Well, like I just who might not like really understand what you mean. Well, like I was just saying, if you allow players to use non-traditional skills for a check, then I, as the GM, I'm going to withhold or not withhold, but I, as the GM, am going to have the option to deny you from making a roll if, for example, you aren't proficient or something like that. Like, I'm going to let you use non-traditional skills, but I'm also going to sometimes deny you from using skills. That's a give or take, right? It goes in both directions. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, another example being GM could, uh, you know, I don't know why a player would ever say this, but let's just say the player's like, could we just increase AC for us as player characters across the board? And I'll go, okay, fine. Monsters are going to do more damage when they do hit you, though. You know? S- stuff like that. Again, I don't, I don't know why a player would ever say that. It's an awful idea. But just, you know, hypothetically. Yeah. <laughs> don't do not do that, players. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, no, we'll no, just make no, the game no. boring. That's you will regret that, it all that will do. All that will do is make the game more boring because everything will take longer. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, or another great example is like what Matt does with his monsters where he will lower their lower their HP by a bunch, but he bumps their damage by a bunch in response. Right? So that the fight goes a little faster, but it still feels visceral and impactful because the players are still getting hurt real bad. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I give this a W take. Yeah, it's a dub. It's a very, very, uh, uh, you know, sp- sprinkling of salt. W take a little bit of salt. Yeah, just a smidgen. Now, if you just pare this down into a singular paragraph, 
actually. It, it, I mean, it is a sick, <laughs> well, no. it's a, it's a no, thick it's paragraph. It's a thick paragraph. A thick boy. Yeah. Paragraph is four to five sentences, Josh. This is how many sentences, the fuck more than that? Yeah, I was going to say, how many sentences, Matt? Go ahead, count. Way the fuck more. <laughs> count the sentences, Matt. Let's see, count. one. I don't, I, don't, I don't even have to count to know it's more than four fucking sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're probably right. Three. Unless there's just one gigantic long run-on sentence. Four. <laughs> That's a uh-huh. run-on sentence. Five. Uh-huh. Six. Uh-huh. Seven. Uh-huh. Eight. You're killing me, small. Nine. Ten. Uh, 11. Okay. Well, all right. So One, two, two, three, four, two paragraphs. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, yeah, it's like two paragraphs. Bruh. <laughs> all right. I mean, they could have been a little more uh, succinct, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Hey, we knew exactly what they meant. The last two, we were confused about what they were even saying. True. Mm-hmm. Where's oh, the happy right. medium? <laughs> yeah, right. Where's the happy medium? Uh, here we go. Another very lukewarm take, but like, yeah, this uh, is a W. Races with dark vision should all have light sensitivity or at the very least give up most of their color sight like nocturnal creatures. They, they yeah, already cool. do. They already, yeah. they already do. They, they literally the, already do. So, well, they don't the have light, sen- is, light sensitivity. They don't have light they sensitivity, give up, but not they give up their color, not. true. Yes, they give up but, all color. That's already a rule. I, I'm, actually gonna, I'm actually gonna call this an L take. Oh, because oh, really? I think I think this needs to go in the opposite direction. I don't think the problem is how dark vision works. I think dark vision should be less ubiquitous and we should bring back low light vision. Oh, you know what? Mm. Yeah, I'll change my answer. I agree with that more. Yeah. 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 Tabaxi should not have dark vision. They should have low light vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dragonborn should have dark vision. I think they do now in one D&D's nuts. Yeah, they do now. But either way, you know, elves, maybe you could argue should have low light vision or maybe drow have dark vision. Normal elves have low light vision. You know, like I think low light vision would help the add a little bit of granularity to this because that's the reason. The reason dark vision is as ubiquitous as it is, is because there used to be more granularity to it. So things like low light vision and dark vision used to be passed out, passed around a little bit more because it wasn't just, you know, dark vision or nothing. But now everything that would have had low light vision just gets dark vision instead in 5e because they took out the other vision options. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's where it becomes a problem. So yeah, uh, 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 I'll take. I also I don't know. I don't like the idea of something with like the thing is is they're like oh like most nocturnal creatures. Nocturnal creatures don't have an issue seeing in the daytime though. Like owls don't like wake up in the middle of the day and like. You know, their eyes bleed out their fucking head like owls True, can see yeah, when the sun you know, is out. Creatures eyes are naturally adaptive. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. They just adapt. It's not like they can't see during the day. They're just nocturnal because that's usually when they hunt or whatever. Or whatever, <laughs> you know, or or for, pre, you know, prey animals. It's when they breed or whatever it is. You know, there's there's a bunch of reasons animals are nocturnal. But like you see possums walking around during the day. They're fine. Raccoons. Yeah. Yeah. I'm convinced. I'll take. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, friendo. Individual, your take is about as spicy as cinnamon, though. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not particularly spicy. All right. I do think light sensitivity should be a thing, though, for like you know drow and kobolds. Though I don't like that they're. T- I don't like that they're taking it away for the drow and the kobolds in uh in the 2024 rules. I think that's goofy. Yeah, but that goes back to the like there should be more downsides in general in the game. Yes, it does. Yes, exactly. <laughs> goes back to the wizard take. <laughs> Yep. Lamal. Uh, let's see. Yeah, damn. Rolling it again. Take. The wizard take will haunt our dreams. Oh, no. W take. Dub take all around. Oh, boy. I agree oh, with this. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Watch me. Lightning bolt is cooler than fireball. I uh-huh. fucking agree. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. Lightning bolt's cooler than fireball. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I. I <laughs> it is. Look, there's a reason. Why the Kamehameha wave is cooler, cooler than Roy Mustang's gloves. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't make the rules. I, I just work I, here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, he's out of line, but he's right. <laughs> Look, don't get me wrong. I like the snappy. All of my characters who do fireball do the fucking Mustang snap at people. Yeah, but yeah. like, 
nothing is cooler than just hitting them with a fucking like Listen, Gatlin gun. You know what I mean? Like as someone who's literally watching rewatching Avatar right now, the lightning bending is just fucking sick. Like there's no way right? to cut it's it. just fucking it's, cool. It's just fucking cool. <laughs> Azula Azula is an awful human being, absolute sociopath of a child. But man, does she look cool when she's shooting that lightning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's she doing? The, the flippy dippy finger things? And yeah. yeah, she just kills whatever she looks yeah, at. Yeah, listen, yeah. you know? Yeah, dope as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, this take is actually. I actually, This take is about as spicy as, like, a Red Hots candy, but it is endearing, <laughs> <laughs> definitively speaking, a yeah. spicy take. I'll give it this. Matt, what Matt, do you think? Yeah, Matt, where do you yeah. fall on this? Uh, yeah, no, I agree. No, uh, you better, bitch. Cool. <laughs> You know what? Actually, no. No, now, now it's mid. It's fine. Because me and me and Josh agree, so it's still a dumb take based <laughs> yeah, on majority vote. Dumb. Lightning cool. <laughs> yeah, lightning cool. Now, I if, I can, if I can get an ice beam spell, now we're really fucking spitting. Mm, mm, mm. I kind of like... Frost. I am not the same, man. I, I need a <laughs> light. Like I, need, I, I want the nah, code of cold that uh, fictionally code. code of cold. Not as cool. I need ice beam. I need Toshiro, you know, Toshiro Hitsugaya, big ice dragon fire out in line. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you can kind of do it there. there you kind of can. You need to take the dragon, bre- use the dragon breath spell and pick the metallic dragon that does cold damage because that is actually true. a, a oh, beam. Yeah. True. True, you do be spitting on that one. I, look, I, I'll go as far as to say this. Dragons oh. that do beam attacks are cooler than dragons that do cone attacks. I agree. I think beam attack dragon cool. Let me be mm. fucking Godzilla. Yeah. Let me play it. Let me let, yeah. let my players fight Godzilla. I want them yeah. like <laughs> in that direction. It's, yeah. 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 They're just dope as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with Godzilla atomic breath. Mm. Hell yeah. All right, that, 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 was, that, was, that was a pretty quick one. Nice. And it was a dub on top of that. Oh my God, my playlist just brought... Jesus Christ. <laughs> my playlist is just put on fucking To Be Loved by Papa Roach. I'm <laughs> sorry. I fucking didn't know 2008 called. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Rolling it again. This was Lupo. Lupo did this. Lupo, I know oh you did this. You God. fucking wrote this, Lupo. I know it was you. <laughs> oh Look, it's fine. Boy. I can call them out if it's their screen name. <laughs> <clears throat> a cleric's first ever use of divine intervention from levels 10 through 19 should be an automatic success. I disagree. Oh, what? What? Wait, whoa, wait, what? Wait, what? One hold, on, automatic hold on. I think the level? first ever. Hold on. Hold on. Isaiah, you've agreed with this before. No, 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 no. I, I think agree Isaiah's with agree with it the first time you use it in general, ever. not the first time every single level from level 10 to 20 or 19. Why 19? I, what the wait, fuck? Wait, wait. Because at I level 20, it's an automatic success anyway. Oh, true. I don't think I don't think that's what he's saying. I think he's saying the first use of it should be an automatic. Because he says the very first use. But he also says there. from yeah. levels 10 to 19. Yeah, I, I, I think, guess because if you don't use it between yeah, because if you 19, don't use it, like, oh, I, I think, oh, okay. If all right, I, so if we're being less charitable and assuming every single level you get one free use, no, absolutely not. L no, take. no. But, but I think I think he's saying the first use ever. Yeah, if, yeah okay. First if it's ever, first use yeah. ever, W take. I agree. Yes, yeah, one hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say I was like, hold on, you guys have both agreed with this before. What do you mean? It, it was it was worded weirdly. It was worded. Weir- I think like, I think yeah. the reason he worded it like that is because you get the ability at level ten, and by level twenty, it becomes automatic. So he's saying somewhere in that range, the first one should be free. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and yes. yes. Uh, so, for to those of you who like are, are not aware of this argument that we've had, because I feel like it's worth bringing back up. We've definitely talked um, about this a lot. We do talk about this a lot, but just in case you haven't, basically our reasoning for this is because in terms of pure flavor and like reinforcing fiction, divine intervention is one of the coolest abilities in the game. Yes. Except it fucking isn't because you have a 10% chance of ever even getting it to work. Yes. And then you can't use it for the rest of the day. Like get it three fucking times. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah, if you're lucky, you can get it a lot, but like, it, it kind of sucks that your level 10 ability 
you have a very real chance never of never it. actually getting until max you level. could until max level. yeah until max level you could be that jackass who just tries it every single day until it works and statistically yeah it's gonna work but nothing's gonna come of it and realistically if you are a player that does that i feel like the gm should punish you in terms of the 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 fiction right Yes. You can't keep knocking on God's door and being like, hey, are you going to do me that favor yet? As eventually, someone's just not going to respond to you. But if the first time you ever do it, it's like a guaranteed it works. And it's not. And the reason why this should be allowed, right, is because the DM has full discretion over how this manifests. The rules of divine interest and divine intervention. Fuck me. The rules of divine intervention state that the, the player offers a request it ha and, and you as the DM can fulfill that request any way you deem necessary. So if a player says, help us stop this bad guy and a giant fist from the heavens punches the shit out of Lord Darkamond, that was up to the DM. The player can't be like, hey, God, can I have a, uh, an ancient gold dragon to come down and smite this loser? That's not how it works. So because you have that control over the situation, pretty much carte blanche, as long as it somewhat uh, uh, agrees with the very, with not the vague, but the broad stipulation that the player requests, you have control over it. So why not let it just go off? If you're afraid it's going to be overpowered, you're in control. Its strength is directly tied to what you're willing to give, as long as it reinforces the fiction and feels good. So why not? It's their level 10 ability. They get to do it potentially once. Fuck it. Let it rock. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. W take. I, as far as I'm aware, I think we're the only... I, I feel like this came from us. I don't remember ever seeing this on the internet. Uh, I don't know if I've heard people say it or not, but it's a thought I've had for a long time myself. I know that. Yeah, I'll throw some spice on it. Uh, we're, we'll call this like a Chipotle mayo from the Chipotle restaurant spicy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll throw we'll throw that like Tabasco in the back of the fridge spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Rolling it again. Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's uh -huh. a small one. Another, uh, we're getting all the quick ones for some reason now. The ability to fly should be normalized. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, I don't like that flying now requires a resource to spend as if 5e didn't have enough of those to think about. Uh, and it feels kind of gimping that my Aerocrocus rings just stop working after a minute and can only work for a minute a day. Yeah. Absolutely. Let flying be more normalized. There's there's bird like creatures and demons with wings in the game and fairies and shit. Let them fucking fly. I absolutely think that you there should be no limit on your uh, druid beast shape other than its challenge rating. Get this fucking you can only be a winged creature at level five bullshit out of here, bro. That shit is for the birds. Ironically speaking, let it out. I'm done. <laughs> um, I'll say yes with a caveat which is I'm okay with flying being normalized if the game either gives or uh, either gives you tools or at the very least explains to you how to handle the issue of flying PCs and what you know some practices around it because it isn't it the reason it's not normalized Normalized is a weird word, but, you know, whatever. The reason it's not ubiquitous in the game and they try to limit it is because it can, if you're not ready for it, cause a lot of issues or confusion or stress or, you know, you as the GM prep something that just gets totally beaten out because you have an error coker in your party, you know, crap like that. So the, you know, Wizards of the Coast is trying to limit it. So that's less of a problem. I think instead, though, Wizards of the Coast should try and give as much guidance as they possibly can on dealing with the problem and, you know, give monsters some more reliable range stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever really looked. Ranged attacks 
feel weirdly limited in a lot of monster stat blocks, which is to say, like, the ratio of things that do have ranged attacks versus things that don't seems a little off. I don't, have you guys noticed that? Or is it um, just me? So Honestly? after after fizz bands, it gets a lot better. But before that, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's not great. It seemed like there was a lot of things that or if they did have range attacks, they were really limited range attacks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of doing this off vibe check feels, but like it, it, it felt that way when I was running vibe. Let's put it that way. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I think that might also kind of be part of the problem, but I think more so the issue with flying characters is like I came up with this cool puzzle or this problem to solve and my flying character just completely shit all over it or whatever. You know, the PCs come to the broken bridge. What do they do? Ah, I'm just going to fly over it. You know, that kind of crap. Mm. So, yeah, I think some guidance on how to deal with it, how to handle it. Practices. Yeah, something. So I'll give I it agree. like a tentative W, I guess. Yeah. I mean, because right now, most of the limits on 5e is like certain races. You can't wear medium or heavy armor or. Uh, sure. There's, I feel like there is another limitation that I don't remember. Well, so I honestly, don't remember. I. Uh, it's yes. like a super uh, minor one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for. um. I believe it's for feral tiefling. You can't wear anything. You can't wear heavy or medium armor. Well, uh, that one, that, that's work. what I'm saying. There's another. I think there's another one besides. Well, there's that. another one. Um, Isaiah, I don't here, Isaiah just out here completely not listening to what Matt said. <laughs> I I, I right, missed the first hands. part. My bad. I, I was like, big no, that's all good. I um, was thinking about well, then, like the subject of I know there are some, and I might just went into my nothing box. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. Um, because like I know like certain newer races or like some tweaked races like Dragonborn now, uh, like from the one D and D's nuts rules. They just get fly as a bonus action, and they, I think granted it only lasts a minute, and it's like, I don't know, it's magic. So it's like they don't they can sprout wings, but they're like ethereal or whatever. Um, but there's no armor limitation to that. So my like, giving up a bonus action to fly, like I, I that's reasonable to me, both as a player as a DM. I don't think that's that bad. It's not it's like that bad. Turn. The problem is that the, the thing comes and it's only a minute. That feels goofy. Yeah, yeah, but the, most the combats don't goofy. last that long. It doesn't like, matter for gosh. combat, but it's out of combat, Matt. That's where flying becomes more of a talking point. Yeah. No. Um, because I the problem is a lot of... Just like, <laughs> well, that's, that's, you, that's, you gotta think that's about why it, I'm like, saying, Matt. The game should tell you how to deal with it, smartass. That's no, what just, I just, just said. Deal with it yourself, forehead. All right, listen, bud. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> listen, bud. Uh, I'll fight you. <laughs> to answer your question, Aarakocra, Fairy, Owlin, and Tiefling all have the heavy medium armor thing. Mm. Okay. Just have uh, just just have the answers for it. God. Matt, how would you deal with it? <laughs> Let's ask. How would you deal with it? Would you just be like out of combat there is no limit on flying and in combat there is? No, you just you just gauge the time in your head, depending on what the characters are doing. But that doesn't that doesn't solve no, no. the problem of you only having the, a minute to fly. Yeah, the problem is we want to be able to fly longer out of combat because it feels stupid that you can only fly for a minute. Well, some some of the newer races have a thing where I think you can expend spell slots to do it. I think That's I could still be dumb. wrong on that one, to be honest. That's I awful. have bi Matt, I have biological wings on my back. Why can I not just fly all the time? I have biological magic wings. There's magic forehead. That's not no. what Aarakocra er have. Aarakocra have physical wings. <laughs> Yeah, that they got from the plane of elemental air. No, they didn't. All right. They did. You Let's still have to answer the question, though. How would you deal yeah, with it? <laughs> I just I just said you gauge it. It's from character to character basis. What does that mean? I, I just explained it. No, no. As you say, you'll gauge it based on character to character, but you have not like, how would I, you? I like, did beforehand. You, you, it depends on what the characters are doing. Like, say they're out of count. They're out of combat. And the one player is like, you know, like your bug guy. I'm like, oh, there's a house on top of the tree that we have to reach. OK, I'll fly. You know, let's say I only have a limited time of one minute to fly. Does it take a full minute to fly? No, we'll, we'll gauge how long, like whatever you're doing. You fly up, you tie a rope around the you know, branch so your party members can go. You go up and down, making sure your party are able to climb up the rope to the tree branch. Like, you know, you just you just kind of feel it out. Matt, I think you're misunderstanding. I, We're talking yeah, about I, I, we are talking about removing the one minute timer from the game. Oh, completely. don't do that. 
But why? Can you give a reason why not to do it? Other than it's nope. just what the rules say right now? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. Just because the rules say it. Okay. Just... The yep. take, Matt, the take is flying should be normalized. And what me and Isaiah are saying is, yeah, you should be able to just fly all the time. And what I'm saying is you can do that so long as the game tells you how to deal with it. Yeah. Matt and Isaiah is asking, how would you deal with it? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Oh, boy. God, no. He got he got nothing. He got nothing. I, I, I said my reasoning. But your reasoning was ignoring our question. Yeah. You went you, around you, our question. You answered you the question in its own question. unique vacuum. You just you didn't answer our question. question. My job here is done. I, I'm going to fucking punch you in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do here. Oh, uh, but I do agree with the take, yeah. Uh, what? Uh, you, no, but what? you don't, though. But you, do, I, but you do, I do. Not eat the fuck. My so mind you is want it enigma. to be more normal. No, fuck you. You want flying to be more normalized. Yes. But you don't want any extrapolation past the... One Some races timer. can fly for a minute, which is exactly what it is right now. Yes. And you don't want it more normalized. Maybe. <laughs> can you actually answer the question? I, 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 <laughs> is that I'm getting fucking annoyed? <laughs> answer the fucking question. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, well, we're getting nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't know if Matt was confused from the beginning or. If we, I, I don't no, know. No, I'm just fucking around. Uh, <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, do you actually have an answer? No, I'm joking. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you could have just said no. <laughs> but then, where where's the fun in that? <laughs> where's oh the fun God. in punching you in the throat? I don't know, Matt. Can you answer that question? <laughs> I mean, hitting things is just fun in general. <laughs> all right, good that's to know. I'll, just, I'll keep true. that in mind. <laughs> all right. Rolling it. <laughs> Did we give that a W and uh, what happened? That's a dub. I don't care uh, what the uh, fuck Matt says. It's a dub. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay. Mm. Next take. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't even really know what to give this one. Wizards of the Coast should just rip off the Band-Aid and include all the real world religions in one expansion book. They already boosted the four, like, four pantheons. Yes, I'm also saying they should include the Abrahamic lore as well with all the different branches and branching faiths. Go big or go home. No! 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 Let's no! Not, absolutely, absolutely not! Absolutely not! <laughs> There's a reason the whole, like, demons and mind? demigods book <laughs> yeah. in the 80s was banned. Like, come on, let's... No! Are you fucking mad? Do you, no. do you, want, no. do you want another satanic panic, but this time it's like... Actually, no, it would be the same thing. Christians are just Yes, mad. Like, yeah, that's exactly what it would be. Oh, like, what do you my mean? God. What do you mean Jesus is only a CR-21? I, I like, don't... Well, I, no, I'm just I, I, okay. <laughs> oh, I don't... I don't know who wrote this... Per whoever wrote this, you you are going... You you want to see the world burn. <laughs> this is... That's craziness. You can't... You cannot put Christianity and Islam and Judaism and, and fucking Buddhism and D&D. That is it's just like that, such it's a bad South idea. Park episode where they have all the like the religious super friends. Oh, my. featuring Muhammad. And you're like, oh, no. oh my God. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I think. The, no. So oh, fuck. I don't know this for a fact, so I'm not going to presume that I know this for a fact. OK, but. The logical explanation as to why we don't have many real world religions that aren't extinct or so few people actually like practice it that they're basically irrelevant, like, you know, people who are still uh, Norse, for yeah. example, uh, is because there is very little backlash involved in that thing. Not enough people still believe in Ra and Zeus to, have, right. to make a kerfuffle out of it. Right. So you have a lot more freed reign with the things that you can do with it and a lot more you can leave up to creative decision yeah if um, you make jesus a, a cr20 wizard who also bangs hookers or something you're gonna piss a lot of people off yeah they're, like most people don't like their real world faith being tested in a shit even in a controlled environment like for yeah. the sake of discussion most people aren't really chill with that as for somebody who's a, i don't know a deist basically i don't particularly give a shit but i am very aware that i am not most people uh no. Yeah, no. Uh, is, you uh, also absolutely do not want to give any of those individual stat blocks because that would only make things worse. 
just keep away. Like, there's a very large reason that all the demons and devils are from, like, one of the 18 trillion Christian AUs, you know? Like, technically speaking, none of the demons of the Ars Goetia are, like, real registered Catholic canon, so you can do whatever the fuck you want with them, because they're not... You're not really going to bug anybody other than like really hardcore Satanists, but like, I don't know, man, go outside and touch some grass. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, no, this is an L take. <laughs> it's spicy as fuck. Yeah. That is some ghost pepper spicy. level spice. <laughs> yeah, but that is an spicy, L take if I've spicy ever Spicy mega one. L take. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Now, okay, I will say to give this person a little bit of a, a, potential, a potential out. I feel like I'm yeah. trying to be nicer to all these takes because I know what a lot of these takes we know the people in question. Um, and I, I'm not trying to start flame wars with people I actually know, but like flame on to, to potentially give the 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 out of what they mean by this. There could be I could see an argument for essentially taking uh, taking real world religions and twisting them into fantasy versions and using that inspiration as backing for Pantheon stuff. And what I mean by that is, for example, the Shinomagami Tensei games are all always use Christian mythology as the basis for a lot of their narrative. But you're not literally fighting God or, you know, Satan. You know, you'll be fighting like... They'll have a funny looking guy and they'll call him like, you know, the Dark Lord or whatever. And it's clearly Satan, but they're not going to say it's Satan. Or you meet some other dude called Yeshua and like, it seems pretty obvious it's supposed to be God, but they're not going to call him God. Like, if you did something like that, I could see an argument for that. That could be kind of fun and interesting if you do it, it you know, re respectfully. But also, D&D's got a bad history of stepping on toes and shit i mean they've brought in actual more modern like asian influenced deities and stuff and been real disrespe disrespectful about the whole situation so like it's a very touchy subject yeah it, but it, yes. faith is a very touchy subject in, in itself, general and yeah. it's it's best to broach it like you're walking on glass shards and eggshells yeah so and look i i understand there is this urge i i get it to just be like fuck it who cares be transgressive. It's it's better to step boundaries and see where you fall than to walk around them. I don't think D&D is the game to do that. <laughs> I don't think it's the game to do that. And to, to go on your Shin Megami Tensei thing, they do actually sometimes very specifically like call out Yahweh and Lucifer. But the difference thing is there is that Shin Megami Tensei is not an interactive game, right? It's a video game. You play it. There's a studio of a bunch of execs who don't give a fuck about you or whoever's complaining, right? You play the game and you go, all right, well, like, I don't know, they're cool things. But you as the dungeon master on, in some level are personally culpable for the things that you bring up in your game. You know? Sure, yeah. That's, I think, the big thing is if you're playing with a, with a, a, a player friend who uh, is Muslim. Oh, like at the actual table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a problem. You're not supposed to depict Muhammad ever. People right. take that very seriously if you depict Muhammad that's a problem for that player and potentially a very irreconcilable one yes don't do that, that you know being, that being said if you have a particular if you're a person I, I'm going to assume the well maybe I shouldn't assume this I was gonna say I was about to say I'm gonna assume this person is perhaps Christian in some fashion maybe I shouldn't assume that um, but if you are somebody who's like Christian and you know has done some theology study and stuff and you think there's some interesting you know pulling from the Old Testament you know everybody likes to talk about the the biblically accurate angels meme right if you want to pull from that stuff in your game and you know your players aren't going to get mad at you or whatever then like just do it yourself but I don't think you could expect wizards to do that yeah no I agree absolutely not uh yeah <laughs> Like Ooh. I said, I'm I'm partially with you. I I I don't exactly not want it to happen, but it should not happen. Yeah, like I said, that's, well, that's what I'm saying. If you have some interesting ideas, do it at your personal table. That that's where I go. You know. Yeah. I all right. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> that might be the spiciest take. That was that was a spicy I, boy. Yeah. I, it's if it's not the spiciest, it's top two for sure. I I mm. would love to. I kind of I really kind of want to know who wrote this and be like, all right. 
Give me your strongest argument for how this could possibly work. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I also do. Like, I'd love to see this person comment. Yeah. Uh, uh, or just <laughs> whoever you are, if you do actually know us, like, just just send us a message. I am maybe. I do actually think I know who wrote this. I only have oh. one guess, and I don't think I'm right. So, yeah, no, I, I I think we're thinking of the same thing. I don't think it was him. Um, no, I, I okay. think I know who wrote this, and I don't think either of you know them. Okay. Uh, wow, we only got two left. I mean, yeah, total runtime so right now. Almost two hours. Nice. So fucking wrap it up, Skippy. You be the about. Get All that right. toilet. Get that toilet of Scabity or whatever the Zoomers say. Alphas. What do we call the Gen Alpha children? What are we calling them yet? A- Abers. Alphas. Omegas. I, what the I don't fuck? know. What are we calling them? We got Zoomers. What do we call the Gen Alpha children? I don't know. I understand them even less. Uh. Nothing, okay, I've got nothing nice to say, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <at all. laughs> hey, easy, easy, easy. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're just going to go top down. <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, there's only two left, so I'm just going to oh, do right, the top right, one right. and the bottom. All right. So we have... Uh, TTRPGs don't need to be complicated to be fun, but they also need to stop running from complicated mechanisms. Uh, I'm going to assume they meant mechanics, especially at higher levels of play. God forbid, instead of just take, uh, tacking on one more damage to, onto spells and attacks, we actually get to have complex effects that do more than big numbers go burr. Um, sure. Uh, here's the thing, bud. Um, I get what you're saying, and I agree. Totally. I do get what you're saying. There, yes, more than just number go bigger. I like number yeah. go bigger because number go bigger. But I, I do get that, that you want more there. But especially when you talk about at higher levels, it's already a clusterfuck. Honestly, at higher levels, as someone who's played at 20th well, level now. Well, it is worth pointing out. This person said tabletop games. They're not only talking about D&D. Uh, true. But yeah, and to be fair, I haven't. Uh, you know, I have not played extremely high level play in anything but a 5e style system. But I also feel like I can't think of many rules like, you know, rules heavy games that are afraid to be complicated. Like, there, so there's there's a there's a difference here. Like, complicated mechanics are not necessarily bad, right? Like, noodly sort of. They're not uh, necessarily good either. Y- no, they're not. But like. trying to think I, I, it just. I, I'm 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 gonna give this an L because I think the this person's being too reductive about the situation yeah no I mean I agree I, I think there, there was thought put into it I, I feel like they said TTRPGs but they're only really talking about 5e because I mean 5e is the obvious when they mention spells and you know numbers going bigger on spells like yeah 5 is the well, obvious I, look at i know pathfinder gets pretty complicated with like the way that rules interact with each other that's why you need to do like build grids when you're playing pathfinder it, it, it can although there is also a certain degree of spells just get bigger damage numbers that does also happen in path okay yeah like I, I think you're just being too reductive on the scenario like the, the first sentence i agree with tabletop games do not need to be complicated to be fun i've played i've played a game called stew pot that was literally just the premise is that your fantasy adventurers stopped being adventurers and now they're running a fantasy tavern and the whole game was just involving rolling a d6 to like resolve like funny scenarios basically and it was super fun like it's true it does not need to be complicated right uh the quiet year is an incredibly basic tabletop game about like developing like an interesting community using cards not super complicated. It's a fun time. Shit. D- Dread is just Jenga, Jenga with a TTRPG yes. slapped on yes. top of it. Yeah, Dread is literally just Jenga. I've also played Dread. Dread is also fun. Like, it, it were, I mean, Dread is heavy, obviously quite reliant on the GM to make it fun, but it obviously could still be quite fun. Mm. Have any of you guys played that but, uh, racing raccoon game? Uh, no. uh, the one page RPG? That one, that was fun. No. No, but I, oh, no, but I do want to play imagine. Goblin with a fat ass. Goblins with a yeah. fat ass. Um, uh, next everyone campaign. take everyone take a shot every time we mention goblins with a fat ass. Look, it, like, it, 
<laughs> people you probably wouldn't be drunk, but you'd be hitting a good buzz by now. <laughs> people want what you know, people you were want binging what the people these episodes. Want. Um But yes, the idea of like running from complicated mechanisms like what do you mean by that? What kind of games are you talking about? Like, what is the thing you have beef with? What do you want to see? Like, yeah, in the 5e context, it's true. A lot of spells don't tend to get much more exciting beyond bigger number. Like, that's true. I, I, I think there's just not enough here. You're being just too reductive about the thing. You have to look at the type of game and stuff, you know, because some games, some games have the objective that as they get towards later stages of play, they get more complicated. But some games have the objective of the later stages of play look pretty much the same as the beginning stages of play. Uh, everyone take another shot because here comes the Apocalypse World reference. Apocalypse World, for the most part, does not get more complicated as your campaign goes on. What changes is that players get more potential options for how to deal with things, but they do not get more complicated or more powerful options. Your abilities don't get linearly better. You just get a wider spread of abilities. So some games, that's just not the objective. Like the point is not to get more complicated. The point is it to is literally for it to feel a certain way the whole way through. But then a game like 5e or Pathfinder is kind of essentially supposed to get more complicated and more noodly and feel more epic and whatnot. So yeah, I'm, I, you're on to something, but I'm giving it an L because you just, you were just, you, 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 you were too, you needed a couple of more sentences in, sentences in here or something. Yeah. Matt? Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah. Room me? Give me this yeah. would you? Yes, what? Oh, yeah. No, I just mid. I didn't, didn't say mid. Oh, you did? Oh, I'm sorry. I said L. <laughs> sorry. God I'm damn sorry. it, Matt. He's not listening. Oh, I, I I lied. By the way, we have we have three more, not two more. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah, I don't. What are you giving the? What are you giving this? Uh, no, this is an L. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, okay. let's see. I mean, we're at not two spicy. hours. So we're, we're just going to lightning round these last ones. Yeah, fuck it. We'll uh, do it. Honestly, th- the last two are basically the same thing. Uh, they are okay. a common pla- complaint about. Oh, no, we already did that one. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Rule of cool should always be considered. Yes, you may not have the actual stats to do that cool jump or combine magic together. But if you're willing to take the risk, you can try it. Uh, a roll to see if it happens with consequences. If you fail with varying degrees of dis- success and failures, depending on what you're trying to accomplish on the battlefield. That's a, uh, and that's how cool the thing is you're trying to do. I, sure. I'm not going to lie. The second half of this is yeah. kind of, of gobbledygook, but the, like, I get what you're saying, right? The rule of cool should not be ignored more often than not. Like let Revity take the wheel and just do the cool thing. Cause it's cool. I get what you're saying. We talked about this before. Uh, you know, yes. Asterisk. No, with two asterisks, like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rule of cool should be considered like, let cool things happen, even if they don't always follow the rules. But do not throw caution to the wind anytime something cool happens, because then the game doesn't really... It stops becoming a game, and then it becomes improv. It's just not... Yeah, don't uh, don't don't break the flow of the fiction just for the sake of a really cool idea. If it just doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. But if, uh, if, if it follows the flow, and if it's on tone and all that other shit, then sure. So I guess mm-hmm. I, a very milk toast W I'll give it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's not a very strong W cuz I mostly This one's been a talking point for so long that I'm like whatever. Yeah, uh, so it's a but it's not like bad or anything. It's about as spicy as Alfredo. <laughs> yeah. as Alfredo spicy as Alfredo. Mm-hmm. Uh that's some spicy as some white people chicken. Yeah. Yeah, some boiled chicken and broccoli. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Skinless boiled one. chicken. Yeah, I don't even have the courtesy to put the bone in. God damn. <laughs> and here's the last one. Uh, there should be some spells that take more than one round, but less than a full minute to cast. Anywhere from two to four rounds to cast for various benefits. Risk, clash, reward. Yeah, I mean yeah, that sounds cool. That, could be cool. that sounds dope as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, I. Hmm. I will say. I will say a tentative yes, depending on execution. Like, 
I could see a version of that idea that's cool, but I could also see a version where it's just really annoying to deal with, you know? Yeah. So, like... Sure, I do like risk reward as a you know as a general balancing tool. So I'll give it a tentative W. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a cool I, I, new way to do it. Then yeah, I agree. the The thing that I would be thinking about right is things like delayed blast fireball. Like let's say you have like a right. delayed blast lightning bolt, and you can just charge your Kamehameha wave for a number right, of rounds. Right. Like that'd be dope as fuck. Or if you do, uh, you know. Shit, if you do something like magic circle and you can like increase the range of your circle or like the amount of monsters it could uh, uh yeah, capture maybe, and Yeah, you, you might be onto something. Maybe the better idea is not to sp- explicitly have spells that take multiple rounds and instead have an option to extend a spell over multiple rounds to change its effect rather than making new spells that take a longer time to cast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's the better idea. Like you said, charging your lightning bolt. Yeah, that actually because I was originally thinking like new spells that always take two to four rounds. But yeah, if it's existing spells that you can essentially cast for a longer period of time to change the effect, that idea I like more, actually. Mm. So yeah, there you go. There's a better there's a version where I will say yes to. Yeah. (laughs) No spice, though. No real spice there. No, no real spice. But I agree. All right. That was it. That's everything. We did it. Ooh, party poppers! Oh, and... Wow, wow, wow! Yeah, I, I think, wow, I think today was definitely a lot more spicy than last time. Was it? I feel like maybe. I guess, yeah, I guess, kind of, yeah. That religion one, fucking Jesus yeah, Lord. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, right. I will say, hey, give person whoever put that religion one in there. You, you fucking, you, you went big or went home on that one. You, you dropped that take, you dropped that grenade right down the pipe. You were like, here you go. Yeah, As I, I give you, I give you props for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I ain't gonna hold you, but uh, you know, I, I, I was gonna be like, you should try that, but that's literally what we said. Like, just fucking, that is if what you want to yes. do it. Uh, my fucking uh, go for it. You should try it. Like, again, if you're the kind of person who's like interested in like the study of theology and shit, and you have some cool ideas about how Jesus could be a fucking illithid or something, go for it, you know? Mm. <laughs> like, I'm not against it. Of course, I'm not a religious person, so of course I'm not against it. I'm yeah, not the target true. audience, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. What was your favorite? I, I'm curious for each of you. What, what was your favorite take so far? From today? Just in general. I don't remember the yeah. ones from before. Damn it. I well, we said a couple, like earlier, the you know Divine Smites balance, the Action Surge to be higher level, the... Uh... Oh, shit, we mentioned them earlier. Fuck, now I'm forgetting. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't remember enough from last time. Um, I mean, from this particular one... I mean the the wizard one just because whoever wrote it wrote it quite well and it was pretty. Wizard funny. one was pretty good. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was pretty good. The first one. <laughs> if there's no other reason that it was pretty funny, much like Brett's was quite hilarious. Actually, Brett's might have been my favorite take from last yeah, time. Yeah, actually, yeah. Brett's is that, a good one. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty good one. Um, yeah, probably the wizard one from today. Mm. Mm. I one, feel or, like. Uh, I'm trying to think maybe the I mean, we had a good talk on the multi skill option one. But again, that one's just kind of like I feel bad saying common sense thing for DMs, but it's the thing that DM should just it's not common sense, but it it's should like, know to do should think or about learn to at do, the very least. Think yeah. About, yeah, just consider if nothing else. Yeah. Give a little room in your brain space. Or if you yeah. I I'm forgot really to basic. say this before, but if you got this far, please hit follow or subscribe. True, true, true. Because we forgot before. No, I'm going to go simple. My favorite one is lightning bolts is cooler than fireball. That's my favorite. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know. How could you say something so bold yet so controversial? That pretty cool. <laughs> lightning bolt cool? Lightning bolt cool. I'll tell you, my least favorite take was that dungeons are cooler than dragons. Yeah, yeah, that would—that's just an L. But I, don't I, abso- know. I refuse. I absolutely refuse. Which one of you 
you people. Which one of you hooligans? Yeah, I. Ironically, y'all need Jesus. I don't. I don't know. What to tell you. <laughs> Let's see. That this does bring our total count to fourteen Ws, with one, two, three, four, five spicy takes. We've got. Uh, oh no, sorry, thirteen. Thirteen. No, I'm dumb. Yeah. Yes, it, it is. It's we have thirteen uh, dubs. We've got eight mez and uh, seven l's with uh, three. That, wait, was that uh, just uh, just today or overall? No, in, in total, in total. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got we got three spicy meh takes and two spicy l's. Okay. Spicy meh oh. take feels like an oxymoron. It does, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It does a little bit. It's like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like jumbo shrimp. Alright, we'll probably be doing another one of these in the next, I don't know, 15 to 20 episodes or whenever the fuck we get to it, if we get to it. But uh, don't, we'll probably don't do make this any, again. Don't make any promises. I'm not. I'm just saying. We'll get to it at some point. We'll do another one of these. <laughs> Sounds like a promise. I don't know, so don't be making no promises. Look, it's a vague promise. It's fine. Hey, fair enough. It's like it's like someone telling you you'll understand when you're older. It's like, <laughs> what does that mean? It's like when you're old, you'll get. It. When you're f- older, you will understand. That's what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I got nothing else. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't either. See y'all next time, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah.